A Treasury of War Poetry By Various Introduction Because man is both militant and pacific, he has expressed in literature, as indeed in the other forms of art, his pacific and militant moods. Nor are these moods, of necessity, incompatible. War may become the price of peace, and peace may so decay as inevitably to bring about war. Of the dully unresponsive pacifist and the jingo patriot, quick to anger, the latter no doubt is the more dangerous to the cause of true freedom, yet both are undesirable citizens. He who believes that peace is illusory and spurious, unless it be based upon justice and liberty, will be proud to battle, if battle he must, for the sake of those foundations. For the most part, the poetry of war, undertaken in this spirit, has touched and exalted such special qualities as patriotism, courage, self-sacrifice, enterprise, and endurance. Where it has tended to glorify war in itself, it is chiefly because war has released those qualities, so to speak, in stirring in spectacular ways. And where it has chosen to round upon war and to upbraid it, it is because war has slain ardent and lovable youths and has brought misery and despair to women and old people. But the war poet has left the mere arguments to others. For himself, he has seen and felt. Envisaging war from various angles, now romantically, now realistically, now as the celebrating chronicler, now as the contemplative interpreter, but always in a spirit of Catholic curiosity, he has sung, The Fall of Troy, The Roman Adventures. The medieval battles and crusades, the fields of Agincourt and Waterloo, and the more modern revolutions. Since Homer, he has spoken with martial eloquence through, the voices of Drayton, Spencer, Marlowe, Webster, Shakespeare, Milton, Byron, Scott, Burns, Campbell, Tennyson, Browning, the New England Group, and Walt Whitman. To mention only a few of the British and American names, and he speaks sincerely and powerfully today in the writings of Kipling. Hardy, Macefield, Binion, Newbolt, Watson, Rupert Brooke, and the two young soldiers, the one English, the other American, who have lately lost their lives while on active service, Captain Charles Hamilton Sorley, who was killed at Hullock. October 18, 1915. And Alan Seeger, who fell, mortally wounded, during the charge on Belloyen Centre, July 4, 1916. There can be little doubt that these several minds and spirits, stirred by the passion and energy of war, and reacting sensitively both to its cruelties and to its pities, have experienced the kinship of quickened insight and finer unselfishness in the face of wide ranging death. They have silently compared, perhaps, the normal materialistic conventions in business, politics, education, and religion, with the relief from those conventions that nearly all soldiers and many civilians experience in time of war. For although war has its too gross and ugly side, it has not dared to learn that inflexibility of custom and conduct that deadens the spirit into a tame submission. This strange rebound and exaltation would seem to be due less to the physical realities of war, which must in many ways cramp and constrain the individual, than to the relative spiritual freedom engendered by the needs of war. If they are to be successfully met. The man of war has an altogether unusual opportunity to realize himself, to cleanse and heal himself through the mastering of his physical fears, through the facing of his moral doubts. Through the re-examination of whatever thoughts he may have possessed, theretofore, about life and death and the universe, and through the quietly unselfish devotion he owes to the welfare of his fellows and to the cause of his native land. Into the stuff of his thought and utterance, whether he be on active service or not, the poet-interpreter of war weaves these intentions, and cooperates with his fellows in building up a little higher and better, from time to time. That edifice of truth for whose completion can be spared no human experience, no human hope. As already suggested, English and American literatures have both received genuine accessions, even thus early, arising out of the present great conflict, and we may be sure that other equally notable contributions will be made. The present anthology contains a number of representative poems produced by English-speaking men and women. The editorial policy has been humanly hospitable, rather than academically critical, especially in the case of some of the verses written by soldiers at the front, which, however slight in certain instances their technical merit may be, 
are yet psychologically interesting as sincere transcripts of personal experience, and will, it is thought, for that very reason, peculiarly attract and interest the reader. It goes without saying that there are several poems in this group which conspicuously succeed also as works of art. For the rest, the attempt has been made, within such limitations as have been experienced, to present pretty freely the best of what has been found available in contemporary British and American war verse. It must speak for itself, and the reader will find that in not a few instances it does so with sensitive sympathy and with living power. Sometimes, too, with that quietly intimate companionableness which we find in Gray's Elegy, and which John Macefield, while lecturing in America in 1916, so often indicated as a prime quality in English poetry. But if this quality appears in Chaucer and the Pre-Romantics and Wordsworth, it appears also in Longfellow and Lowell, in Emerson and Lanier, and in William Vaughan Moody. For American poetry is, after all, as English poetry, with a difference, sprung from the same sources, and coursing along similar channels. The new fellowship of the two great Anglo-Saxon nations which a book of this character may, to a degree, illustrate, is filled with such high promise for both of them, and for all civilization, that it is perhaps hardly too much to say. With Ambassador Walter H. Page, in his address at the Pilgrim's Dinner in London, April 12, 1917, we shall get out of this association an indissoluble companionship, and we shall henceforth have indissoluble mutual duties for mankind. I doubt if there could be another international event comparable in large value and in long consequences to this closer association. Mr. Balfour struck the same note when, during his mission to the United States, he expressed himself in these words, that this great people should throw themselves whole-heartedly into this mighty struggle. Prepared for all efforts and sacrifices that may be required to win success for this most righteous cause, is an event at once so happy and so momentous that only the historian of the future will be able, as I believe, to measure its true proportions. The words of these eminent men ratify in the field of international politics the hopeful anticipation which Tennyson expressed in his poem, Hands All Round, as it appeared in the London Examiner, February 7, 1852. Gigantic daughter of the West. We drink to thee across the flood. We know thee most, we love thee best. For art thou not of British blood? Should war's mad blast again be blown? Permit not thou the tyrant powers. To fight thy mother here alone. But let thy broadsides roar with ours. Hands all round. God the tyrants cause confound. To our great kinsmen of the West, my friends. And the great name of England, round and round. O oh, rise, our strong Atlantic sons. When war against our freedom springs. O oh, speak to Europe through your guns. They can be understood by kings. You must not mix our queen with those. That wish to keep their people fools. Our freedom's foemen are her foes. She comprehends the race she rules. Hands all round. God the tyrants cause confound. To our dear kinsmen of the West, my friends. And the great cause of freedom, round and round. They ratify also the spirit of those poems in the present volume which seek to interpret to Britons and Americans their deepening friendship. Poets, said Shelley, are the unacknowledged legislators of the world, and he meant by legislation the guidance and determination of the verdicts of the human soul. G. H. C. August, 1917. How do you find this book? Any thoughts about the book or the author? Any suggestion for improvement? Please take a moment to share your thoughts in a comment. If you like it, share it with your friends who might enjoy it as well. Subscribe to keep in touch. Visit completeaudiobooks.com for more quality content. 1. England. The Choice. The American spirit speaks. To the judge of right and wrong. With whom fulfillment lies. Our purpose and our power belong. Our faith and sacrifice. Let freedom's land rejoice. Our ancient bonds are riven. Once more to us the eternal choice. Of good or ill is given. Not at a little cost. 
hardly by prayer or tears. Shall we recover the road we lost? In the drugged and doubting years. But after the fires and the wrath. But after searching and pain. His mercy opens us a path. To live with ourselves again. In the gates of death rejoice. We see and hold the good. Bear witness, earth, we have made our choice. For freedom's brotherhood. Then praise the Lord Most High. Whose strength hath saved us whole. Who bade us choose that the flesh should die. And not the living soul. Rudyard Kipling. Liberty enlightening the world. Thou warden of the western gate, above Manhattan Bay. The fogs of doubt that hid thy face are driven clean away. Thine eyes at last look far and clear. Thou liftest high thy hand. To spread the light of liberty worldwide for every land. No more thou dreamest of a peace reserved alone for thee. While friends are fighting for thy cause beyond the guardian sea. The battle that they wage is thine, thou fallest if they fall. The swollen flood of Prussian pride will sweep unchecked o'er all. O oh, cruel is the conquer lust in Hohenzollern brains. The paths they plot to gain their goal are dark with shameful stains. No faith they keep, no law revere, no god but naked might. They are the foemen of mankind. Up, liberty, and smite. Britain, and France, and Italy, and Russia newly born. Have waited for thee in the night. Oh, come as comes the morn. Serene and strong and full of faith, America, arise. With steady hope and mighty help to join thy brave allies. O oh, dearest country of my heart, home of the high desire. Make clean thy soul for sacrifice on freedom's altar fire. For thou must suffer, thou must fight, until the warlord cease. And all the peoples lift their heads in liberty and peace. Henry Van Dyke April 10, 1917 To the United States of America Brothers in blood They who this wrong began To wreck our commonwealth, will rue the day When first they challenged freemen to the fray And with the Briton dared the American Now are we pledged to win the rights of man Labor and justice now shall have their way And in a league of peace, God grant we may Transform the earth, not patch up the old plan. Sure is our hope since he who led your nation. Spake for mankind, and ye arose in awe. Of that high call to work the world's salvation. Clearing your minds of all estranging blindness. In the vision of beauty and the Spirit's law. Freedom and honor and sweet loving kindness. Robert Bridges April 30, 1917 Abraham Lincoln walks at midnight. In Springfield, Illinois. It is portentous, and a thing of state. That here at midnight, in our little town. A morning figure walks, and will not rest. Near the old courthouse pacing up and down. Or by his homestead, or in shadowed yards. He lingers where his children used to play. Or through the market, on the well-worn stones. He stalks until the dawn stars burn away. A bronzed, lank man. His suit of ancient black. A famous high top hat and plain worn shawl. Make him the quaint great figure that men love. The prairie lawyer, master of us all. He cannot sleep upon his hillside now. He is among us, as in times before. And we who toss and lie awake for long. Breathe deep, and start to see him pass the door. His head is bowed. He thinks on men and kings. Yeah, when the sick world cries, how can he sleep? Too many peasants fight, they know not why. Too many homesteads in black terror weep. The sins of all the warlords burn his heart. He sees the dreadnought scouring every main. He carries on his shawl-wrapped shoulders now. The bitterness, the folly, and the pain. He cannot rest until a spirit dawn. Shall come. The shining hope of Europe free. The league of sober folk, the workers earth. Bringing long peace to Cornland, Alp, and sea. 
it breaks his heart that kings must murder still. That all his hours of travail here for men seem yet in vain. And who will bring white peace? That he may sleep upon his hill again. Vachel Lindsay. The William P. Fry. I saw her first abreast the Boston Light. At anchor, she had just come in, turned head. And sent her hawsers creaking, clattering down. I was so near to where the hawsepipes fed. The cable out from her careening bow. I moved up on the swell, shut steam and lay. Hove to in my old launch to look at her. She'd come in light, a skimming up the bay. Like a white ghost with topsails bellying full. And all her noble lines from bow to stern. Made music in the wind. It seemed she rode. The morning air like those thin clouds that turn. Into tall ships when sunrise lifts the clouds. From calm sea courses. There, in smoke smudged coats. Lay funneled liners, dirty fishing craft. Blunt cargo luggers, tugs, and ferry boats. Oh, it was good in that black scuttled lot. To see the fry come lording on her way. Like some old queen that we had half forgot. Come to her own. A little up the bay. The fort lay green, for it was springtime then. The wind was fresh, rich with the spicy bloom. Of the New England coast that tardily. Escapes, late April, from an icy tomb. The state house glittered on old Beacon Hill. Gold in the sun. T was also fair a while. But she was fairest, this great square rigged ship. That had blown in from some far happy isle. On from the shores of the Hesperides. They caught her in a South Atlantic road. Becalmed, and found her hold brimmed up with wheat. Wheat's contraband, they said, and blew her hull. To pieces, murdered one of our staunch fleet. Fast dwindling, of the big old sailing ships. That carry trade for us on the high sea. And warped out of each harbor in the States. It wasn't law, so it seemed strange to me. A big mistake. Her keel struck bottom now. And her four masts sunk fathoms, fathoms deep. To Davy Jones. The dank seaweed will root. On her oozed decks, and the cross surges sweep. Through the set sails. But never, never more. Her crew will stand away to brace and trim. Nor sea blown petrels meet her thrashing up. To windward on the Gulf Stream stormy rim. Never again she'll head a northeast gale. Or like a spirit loom up, sliding dumb. And ride in safe beyond the Boston light. To make the harbor glad because she's come. Jean Robert Foster. 2. England and America. England and America. Mother and child. Though the dividing sea. Shall roll its tide between us, we are one. Knit by immortal memories, and none. But feels the throb of ancient fealty. A century has passed since at thy knee. We learnt the speech of freemen, caught the fire. That would not brook thy menaces, when sire. And grandsire hurled injustice back to thee. But the full years have wrought equality. The past outworn, shall not the future bring. A deeper union, from whose life shall spring. Mankind's best hope. In the dark night of strife. Men perished for their dream of liberty. Whose lives were given for this larger life. Florence T. Holt. To America. When the fire sinks in the grate, and night has bent. Close wings about the room, and winter stands. Hard-eyed before the window, when the hands. Have turned the book's last page and friends are sleeping. Thought. As it were an old stringed instrument. Drawn to remembered music, oft does set. The lips moving in prayer, for us fresh keeping. Knowledge of springtime and the violet. And, as the eyes grow dim with many years. The spirit runs more swiftly than the feet. Perceives its comfort, knows that it will meet. God at the end of troubles, that the dreary. Last reaches of old age lead beyond tears. 
to happy youth unending. There is peace. In homeward waters, where at last the weary shall find rebirth, and their long struggle cease. So, at this hour, when the old world lies sick, beyond the pain, the agony of breath, hard drawn, beyond the menaces of death, o'er graves and years leans out the eager spirit. First must the ancient die, then shall be quick. New fires within us. Brother, we shall make. Incredible discoveries and inherit. The fruits of hope, and love shall be awake. Charles Langbridge Morgan. A chant of love for England. A song of hate is a song of hell. Some there be that sing it well. Let them sing it loud and long. We lift our hearts in a loftier song. We lift our hearts to heaven above. Singing the glory of her we love. England. Glory of thought and glory of deed. Glory of Hampton and Runnymede. Glory of ships that sought far goals. Glory of swords and glory of souls. Glory of songs mounting as birds. Glory immortal of magical words. Glory of Milton, glory of Nelson. Tragical glory of Gordon and Scott. Glory of Shelley, glory of Sidney. Glory transcendent that perishes not. Hers is the story, hers be the glory. England. Shatter her beauteous breast ye may. The spirit of England none can slay. Dash the bomb on the dome of Paul's. Deem ye the fame of the admiral falls. Pry the stone from the chancel floor. Dream ye that Shakespeare shall live no more. Where is the giant shot that kills? Wordsworth walking the old green hills. Trample the red rose on the ground. Keats his beauty while earth spins round. Bind her, grind her, burn her with fire. Cast her ashes into the sea. She shall escape, she shall aspire. She shall arise to make men free. She shall arise in a sacred scorn. Lighting the lives that are yet unborn. Spirit supernal, splendor eternal. England. Helen Gray Cohn. Adesti. Paul's. April 20, 1917. Not since Wren's dome has whispered with man's prayer. Have angels leaned to wonder out of heaven. At such a brush of intercession given. Here where today one soul two nations share. And with a cord send up through trembling air. Their vows to strive as honor ne'er has striven. Till back to hell the lords of hell are driven. And life and peace again shall flourish fair. This is the day of conscience high enthroned. The day when east is west and west is east. To strike for human love and freedom's word. Against foul wrong that cannot be atoned. Today is hope of brotherhood's bond increased. And Christ, not Odin, is acclaimed the Lord. Hardwick Drummond Ronsley Jimmy Doan Often I think of you, Jimmy Doan. You who, light-heartedly, came to my house. Three autumns, to shoot and to eat a grouse. As I sat apart in this quiet room. My mind was full of the horror of war. And not with the hope of a visitor. I had dined on food that had lost its taste. My soul was cold and I wished you were here. When, all in a moment, I knew you were near. Placing that chair where you used to sit. I looked at my book, three years today. Since you laughed in that seat and I heard you say. My country is with you, whatever befall. America, Britain, these two are akin. In courage and honor. They underpin. The rights of mankind. Then you grasped my hand. With a brotherly grip, and you made me feel. Something that time would surely reveal. You were comely and tall, you had corded arms. And sympathy's grace with your strength was blent. You were generous, clever, and confident. There was that in your hopes which uncountable lives. Have perished to make, your heart was fulfilled. With the breath of God that can never be stilled. A living symbol of power, you talked. Of the work to do in the world to make. 
Life beautiful, yes, and my heartstrings ache. To think how you, at the stroke of war, chose that your steadfast soul should fly. With the eagles of France as their proud ally. You were America's self, dear lad. The first swift son of your bright, free land. To heed the call of the inner command. To image its spirit in such rare deeds. As braced the valor of France. Who knows? That the heart of America thrills with her woes. For a little leaven leavens the whole. Mostly we find, when we trouble to seek. The soul of a people, that some unique. Brave man is its flower and symbol, who. Makes bold to utter the words that choke. The throats of feebler, timider folk. You flew for the western eagle, and fell. Doing great things for your country's pride. For the beauty and peace of life you died. Britain and France have shrined in their souls. Your memory. Yes, and forever you share. Their love with their perished lords of the air. Invisible now, in that empty seat. You sit, who came through the clouds to me. Swift as a message from over the sea. My house is always open to you. Dear spirit, come often and you will find. Welcome, where mind can foregather with mind. And may we sit together one day. Quietly here, when a word is said. To bring new gladness unto our dead. Knowing your dream is a dream no more. And seeing on some momentous pact. Your vision upbuilt as a deathless fact. Roland Thomir. Princeton, May, 1917. Here freedom stood by slaughtered friend and foe. And, ere the wrath paled or that sunset died. Looked through the ages, then, with eyes aglow. Laid them to wait that future, side by side. Lines for a monument to the American and British soldiers of the Revolutionary War who fell on the Princeton battlefield and were buried in one grave. Now lamplit gardens in the blue dusk shine. Through dogwood, red and white. And round the grey quadrangles, line by line. The windows fill with light. Where Princeton calls to Magdalen, tower to tower. Twin lanterns of the law. And those cream-white magnolia boughs embower. The halls of bold Nassau. The dark bronze tigers crouch on either side. Where redcoats used to pass. And round the bird-loved house where Mercer died. And violets dusk the grass. By stony brook that ran so red of old. But sings of friendship now. To feed the old enemy's harvest fiftyfold. The green earth takes the plough. Through this May night, if one great ghost should stray. With deep remembering eyes. Where that old meadow of battle smiles away. Its blood-stained memories. If Washington should walk, where friend and foe. Sleep and forget the past. Be sure his unquenched heart would leap to know. Their souls are linked at last. Be sure he waits, in shadowy buff and blue. Where those dim lilacs wave. He bends his head to bless, as dreams come true. The promise of that grave. Then, with a vaster hope than thought can scan. Touching his ancient sword. Praise for that mightier realm of God in man. Hasten thy kingdom, Lord. Land of our hope, land of the singing stars. Type of the world to be. The vision of a world set free from wars. Takes life, takes form from thee. Where all the jarring nations of this earth. Beneath the all-blessing sun. Bring the new music of mankind to birth. And make the whole world one. And those old comrades rise around him there. Old foemen, side by side. With eyes like stars upon the brave night air. And young as when they died. To hear your bells, O oh beautiful Princeton Towers. Ring for the world's release. They see you piercing like grey swords through flowers. And smile, from souls at peace. Alfred Noyes. 3. England. The Vigil. England. Where the sacred flame. Burns before the inmost shrine. 
where the lips that love thy name consecrate their hopes and thine, where the banners of thy dead weave their shadows overhead. Watch beside thine arms tonight. Pray that God defend the right. Think that when tomorrow comes, war shall claim command of all. Thou must hear the roll of drums. Thou must hear the trumpet's call. Now, before thy silence Ruth, commune with the voice of truth. England. On thy knees tonight. Pray that God defend the right. Single-hearted, unafraid. Hither all thy heroes came. On this altar steps were laid. Gordon's life and Outram's fame. England. If thy will be yet. By their great example set. Here beside thine arms tonight. Pray that God defend the right. So shalt thou when morning comes. Rise to conquer or to fall. Joyful hear the rolling drums. Joyful tear the trumpet's call. Then let memory tell thy heart. England. What thou wert, thou art. Gird thee with thine ancient might. Fourth. And God defend the right. Henry Newbolt. For all we have and are. For all we have and are. For all our children's fate. Stand up and meet the war. The Hun is at the gate. Our world has passed away. In wantonness o'erthrown. There is nothing left today. But steel and fire and stone. Though all we knew depart. The old commandments stand. In courage keep your heart. In strength lift up your hand. Once more we hear the word. That sickened earth of old. No law except the sword. Unsheathed and uncontrolled. Once more it knits mankind. Once more the nations go. To meet and break and bind. A crazed and driven foe. Comfort, content, delight. The ages slow bought gain. They shriveled in a night. Only ourselves remain. To face the naked days. In silent fortitude. Through perils and dismays. Renewed and re-renewed. Though all we may depart. The old commandments stand. In patience keep your heart. In strength lift up your hand. No easy hopes or lies. Shall bring us to our goal. But iron sacrifice. Of body, will, and soul. There is but one task for all. For each one life to give. Who stands if freedom fall? Who dies if England live? Rudyard Kipling. England to free men. Men of my blood, you English men. From misty hill and misty fun. From cot, and town, and plough, and moor. Come in, before I shut the door. Into my courtyard paved with stones. That keep the names, that keep the bones. Of none but English men who came. Free of their lives, to guard my fame. I am your native land who bred. No driven heart, no driven head. I fly a flag in every sea. Round the old earth, of liberty. I am the land that boasts a crown. The sun comes up, the sun goes down. And never men may say of me. Mine is a breed that is not free. I have a wreath. My forehead wears. A hundred leaves, a hundred years. I never knew the words, you must. And shall my wreath return to dust? Freeman. The door is yet ajar. From northern star to southern star. O ye who count and ye who delve. Come in, before my clock strikes twelve. John Galsworthy. Pro Patria. England, in this great fight to which you go. Because, where honor calls you, go you must. Be glad, whatever comes, at least to know. You have your quarrel just. Peace was your care. Before the nation's bar. Her cause you pleaded and her ends you sought. But not for her sake, being what you are. Could you be bribed and bought. Others may spurn the pledge of land to land. 
may with the brute sword stain a gallant past. But by the seal to which you set your hand. Thank God, you still stand fast. Fourth, then, to front that peril of the deep. With smiling lips and in your eyes the light. Steadfast and confident, of those who keep. Their storied, scutcheon bright. And we, whose burden is to watch and wait. High-hearted ever, strong in faith and prayer. We ask what offering we may consecrate. What humble service share. To steel our souls against the lust of ease. To bear in silence though our hearts may bleed. To spend ourselves, and never count the cost. For others greater need. To go our quiet ways, subdued and sane. To hush all vulgar clamor of the street. With level calm to face alike the strain. Of triumph or defeat. This be our part, for so we serve you best. So best confirm their prowess and their pride. Your warrior sons, to whom in this high test. Our fortunes we confide. Owen Seaman August 12, 1914 Lines written in Surrey, 1917 A sudden swirl of song in the bright sky. The little lark adoring his lord the sun. Across the corn the lazy ripples run. Under the eaves, conferring drowsily. Doves droop or amble. The agile waterfly. Wrinkles the pool, and flowers, gay and dun. Rose, bluebell, rhododendron, one by one. The buccaneering bees prove busily. Ah, who may trace this tranquil loveliness? In verse felicitous, no measure tells. But gazing on her bosom we can guess. Why men strike hard for England in red hells. Falling on dreams, mid death's extreme caress. Of English daisies dancing in English dells. George Herbert Clark. 4. France. France. Because for once the sword broke in her hand. The words she spoke seemed perished for a space. All wrong was brazen, and in every land. The tyrants walked abroad with naked face. The waters turned to blood, as rose the star. Of evil fate denying all release. The rulers smote, the feeble crying, war. The usurers robbed, the naked crying, peace. And her own feet were caught in nets of gold. And her own soul profaned by sex that squirm. And little men climbed her high seats and sold. Her honor to the vulture and the worm. And she seemed broken and they thought her dead. The overmen, so brave against the weak. Has your last word of sophistry been said? O cult of slaves! Then it is hers to speak. Clear the slow mists from her half-darkened eyes. As slow mists parted over Valmy fell. As once again her hands in high surprise. Take hold upon the battlements of hell. Cecil Chesterton. The name of France. Give us a name to fill the mind. With the shining thoughts that lead mankind. The glory of learning, the joy of art. A name that tells of a splendid part. In the long. Long toil and the strenuous fight. Of the human race to win its way. From the feudal darkness into the day. Of freedom, brotherhood, equal right. A name like a star, a name of light. I give you France. Give us a name to stir the blood. With a warmer glow and a swifter flood. A name like the sound of a trumpet, clear. And silver sweet, and iron strong. That calls three million men to their feet. Ready to march. And steady to meet. The foes who threaten that name with wrong. A name that rings like a battle song. I give you France. Give us a name to move the heart. With the strength that noble griefs impart. A name that speaks of the blood outpoured. To save mankind from the sway of the sword. A name that calls on the world to share. In the burden of sacrificial strife. Where the cause at stake is the world's free life. And the rule of the people everywhere. A name like a vow, a name like a prayer. I give you France. 
Henry Van Dyke. Vive la France. France line rose in the dawning gray. And her heart would dance though she knelt to pray. For her man Michel had holiday. Fighting for France. She offered her prayer by the cradle side. And with baby palms folded in hers she cried. If I have but one prayer, dear, crucified. Christ, save France. But if I have two, then, by Mary's grace. Carry me safe to the meeting place. Let me look once again on my dear love's face. Save him for France. She crooned to her boy, oh, how glad he'll be. Little three months old, to set eyes on thee. For, rather than gold, would I give, wrote he. A son to France. Come, now, be good, little stray Sauterelle. For we're going bye-bye to thy papa Michel. But I'll not say where for fear thou wilt tell. Little pigeon of France. Six days leave and a year between. But what would you have? In six days clean. Heaven was made, said Franceline. Heaven and France. She came to the town of the nameless name. To the marching troops in the street she came. And she held high her boy like a taper flame. Burning for France. Fresh from the trenches and grey with grime. Silent they march like a pantomime. But what need of music? My heart beats time. Vive la France. His regiment comes. Oh, then where is he? There is dust in my eyes, for I cannot see. Is that my Michel to the right of thee? Soldier of France. Then out of the ranks a comrade fell. Yesterday, T was a splinter of shell. And he whispered thy name, did thy poor Michel. Dying for France. The tread of the troops on the pavement throbbed. Like a woman's heart of its last joy robbed. As she lifted her boy to the flag, and sobbed. Vive la France. Charlotte Holmes Crawford. The soul of Jean Dark. She came not into the presence as a martyred saint might come, crowned, white-robed and adoring, with very reverence dumb. She stood as a straight young soldier, confident, gallant, strong. Who asks a boon of his captain in the sudden hush of the drum. She said, Now have I stayed too long in this my place of bliss. With these glad dead that, comforted, forget what sorrow is. Upon that world whose stony stairs they climb to come to this. But lo, a cry hath torn the peace wherein so long I stayed. Like a trumpet's call at heaven's wall from a herald unafraid. A million voices in one cry, where is the maid, the maid? I had forgot from too much joy that olden task of mine. But I have heard a certain word shatter the chant divine. Have watched a banner glow and grow before mine eyes for sign. I would return to that my land flung in the teeth of war. I would cast down my robe and crown that pleasure me no more. And don the armor that I knew, the valiant sword I bore. An angel's militant shall fling the gates of heaven wide. And souls new dead whose lives were shed like leaves on war's red tide. Shall cross their swords above our heads and cheer us as we ride. For with me goes that soldier saint. Saint Michael of the sword. And I shall ride on his right side, a page beside his lord. And men shall follow like swift blades to reap a sure reward. Grant that I answer this my call, yea, though the end may be. The naked shame, the biting flame, the last, long agony. I would go singing down that road where faggots wait for me. Mine be the fire about my feet, the smoke above my head. So might I glow, a torch to show the path my heroes tread, my captain. Oh, my captain, let me go back, she said. Theodosia Garrison. Oh glorious France! You have become a forge of snow-white fire. A crucible of molten steel, O oh France! Your sons are stars who cluster to a dawn. And fade in light for you, O oh glorious France! They pass through meteor changes with a song. Which to all islands and all continents. Says life is neither comfort, wealth, nor fame. 
nor quiet hearthstones, friendship, wife, nor child. Nor love, nor youth's delight, nor manhood's power. Nor many days spent in a chosen work. Nor honored merit, nor the pattern theme. Of daily labor, nor the crowns nor wreaths. Of seventy years. These are not all of life. O France, whose sons amid the rolling thunder. Of cannon stand in trenches where the dead. Clog the ensanguined ice. But life to these. Prophetic and enraptured souls is vision. And the keen ecstasy of faded strife. And divination of the loss as gain. And reading mysteries with brightened eyes. In fiery shock and dazzling pain before. The orient splendor of the face of death. As a great light beside a shadowy sea. And in a high will strenuous exercise. Where the warm spirit finds its fullest strength. And is no more afraid. And in the stroke. Of azure lightning when the hidden essence. And shifting meaning of man's spiritual worth. And mystical significance in time. Are instantly distilled to one clear drop. Which mirrors earth and heaven. This is life. Flaming to heaven in a minute span. When the breath of battle blows the smoldering spark. And across these seas. We who cry peace and treasure life and cling. To cities, happiness, or daily toil. For daily bread, or trail the long routine. Of seventy years, taste not the terrible wine. Whereof you drink. Who drain and toss the cup. Empty and ringing by the finished feast. Or have it shaken from your hand by sight. Of God against the olive woods. As Joan of Arc amid the apple trees. With sacred joy first heard the voices, then. Obeying plunged at Orleans in a field. Of spears and lived her dream and died in fire. Thou, France. Hast heard the voices and hast lived. The dream and known the meaning of the dream. And read its riddle, how the soul of man. May to one greatest purpose make itself. A lens of clearness, how it loves the cup. Of deepest truth. And how its bitterest gall. Turn sweet to soul surrender. And you say. Take days for repetition, stretch your hands. For mocked renewal of familiar things. The beaten path, the chair beside the window. The crowded street, the task, the accustomed sleep. And waking to the task. Or many springs. Of lifted cloud, blue water, flowering fields. The prison house grows close no less, the feast. A place of memory sick for senses dulled. Down to the dusty end where pitiful time. Grown weary cries enough. Edgar Lee Masters. To France. Those who have stood for thy cause when the dark was around thee. Those who have pierced through the shadows and shining have found thee. Those who have held to their faith in thy courage and power. Thy spirit, thy honor. Thy strength for a terrible hour. Now can rejoice that they see thee in light and in glory. Facing whatever may come as an end to the story. In calm undespairing. With steady eyes fixed on the morrow. The morn that is pregnant with blood and with death and with sorrow. And whether the victory crowns thee, O France the Eternal. Or whether the smoke and the dusk of a nightfall infernal. Gather about thee, and us, and the foe. And all treasures. Run with the flooding of war into bottomless measures. Fall what befalls, in this hour all those who are near thee. And all who have loved thee, they rise and salute and revere thee. Herbert Jones. Place de la Concorde. August 14, 1914. Since the bombardment of Strasbourg, August 14, 1870, her statue in Paris, representing Alsace, has been draped in mourning by the French people. Near where the royal victims fell. In days gone by, caught in the swell. Of a ruthless tide. Of human passion, deep and wide. There were we too. A nation's later sorrow knew. Today, O oh friend. 
I stood. Amid a self-ruled multitude. That by nor sound nor word. Betrayed how mightily its heart was stirred. A memory time never could efface. A memory of grief. Like a great silence brooded o'er the place. And men breathed hard, as seeking for relief. From an emotion strong. That would not cry, though held in check too long. One felt that joy drew near. A joy intense that seemed itself to fear. Brightening in eyes that had been dull. As all with feeling gazed. Upon the Strasbourg figure, raised. Above us, mourning, beautiful. Then one stood at the statue's base, and spoke. Men needed not to ask what word. Each in his breast the message heard. Writ for him by despair. That evermore in moving phrase. Breathes from the invalids and Père Lachaise. Vainly it seemed, alas. But now, France looking on the image there. Hope gave her back the lost Alsace. A deeper hush fell on the crowd. A sound, the lightest, seemed too loud. Would, friend, you had been there. As to that form the speaker rose. Took from her, fold on fold. The mournful crepe, grey-worn and old. Her, proudly, to disclose. And with the touch of tender care. That fond emotion speaks. Mid tears that none could quite command. Placed the tricolor in her hand. And kissed her on both cheeks. Florence Earl Coates. To France. What is the gift we have given thee, sister? What is the trust we have laid in thy hand? Hearts of our bravest, our best, and our dearest. Blood of our blood we have sown in thy land. What for all time will the harvest be, sister? What will spring up from the seed that is sown? Freedom and peace and goodwill among nations. Love that will bind us with love all our own. Bright is the path, that is opening before us. Upward and onward it mounts through the night. Sword shall not sever the bonds that unite us. Leading the world to the fullness of light. Sorrow hath made thee more beautiful, sister. Nobler and purer than ever before. We who are chastened by sorrow and anguish. Hail thee as sister and queen evermore. Frederick George Scott. Cavive. Cavive. Who passes by up there? Who moves, what stirs in the startled air? What whispers, thrills, exults up there? Cavive. The flags of France. What wind on a windless night is this? That breathes as light as a lover's kiss. That blows through the night with bugle notes. That streams like a pennant from a lance. That rustles, that floats. The flags of France. What richly moves, what lightly stirs. Like a noble lady in a dance. When all men's eyes are in love with hers. And needs must follow. The flags of France. What calls to the heart, and the heart has heard. Speaks, and the soul has obeyed the word. Summons, and all the years advance. And the world goes forward with France, with France. Who called? The flags of France. What flies, a glory, through the night. While the legions stream, a line of light. And men fall to the left and fall to the right. But they fall not. The flags of France. Cavive. Who comes? What approaches there? What soundless tumult, what breath in the air? Takes the breath in the throat, the blood from the heart. In a flame of dark, to the unheard beat. Of an unseen drum and fleshless feet. Without glint of barrel or bayonet's glance. They approach, they come. Who comes? Hush. Hark. Cavive. The flags of France. Uncover the head and kneel, kneel down. A monarch passes, without a crown. Let the proud tears fall but the heart beat high. The greatest of all is passing by. On its endless march in the endless plan. Cavive. 
The Spirit of Man. O Spirit of Man, pass on. Advance. And they who lead, who hold the van. Kneel down. The Flags of France. Grace Ellery Channing Paris, 1917. 5. Belgium. To the Belgians. O race that Caesar knew. That one stern Roman praise. What land not envies you? The laurel of these days. You built your cities rich. Around each towered hall. Without, the statued niche. Within, the pictured wall. Your ship thronged wharves, your marts. With gorgeous Venice vied. Peace and her famous arts. Were yours, though tide on tide. Of Europe's battle scourged. Black field and reddened soil. From blood and smoke emerged. Peace and her fruitful toil. Yet when the challenge rang. The warlord comes, give room. Fearless to arms you sprang. Against the odds of doom. Like your own Damien. Who sought that leper's isle. To die a simple man. For men with tranquil smile. So strong in faith you dared. Defy the giant, scorn. Ignobly to be spared. Though trampled, spoiled, and torn. And in your faith arose. And smote. And smote again. Till those astonished foes. Reeled from their mounds of slain. The faith that the free soul. Untaught by force to quail. Through fire and dirge and dole. Prevails and shall prevail. Still for your frontier stands. The host that knew no dread. Your little, stubborn lands. Nameless, immortal dead. Lawrence Binion. Belgium. La Belgique any regret reign. Not with her ruined silver spires. Not with her cities shamed and rent. Perish the imperishable fires. That shape the homestead from the tent. Wherever men are staunch and free. There shall she keep her fearless state. And homeless, to great nations be. The home of all that makes them great. Edith Wharton. To Belgium. Champion of human honor, let us lave. Your feet and bind your wounds on bended knee. Though coward hands have nailed you to the tree. And shed your innocent blood and dug your grave. Rejoice and live. Your oriflamme shall wave. While man has power to perish and be free. A golden flame of holiest liberty. Proud as the dawn and as the sunset brave. Belgium, where dwelleth reverence for right. Enthroned above all ideals. Where your fate. And your supernal patience and your might. Most sacred grow in human estimate. You shine a star above this stormy night. Little no more, but infinitely great. Eden Philpots. To Belgium in exile. Lines dedicated to one of her priests, by whose words they were prompted. Land of the desolate, mother of tears. Weeping your beauty marred and torn. Your children tossed upon the spears. Your altars rent, your hearths forlorn. Where spring has no renewing spell. And love no language save a long farewell. Ah, precious tears, and each a pearl. Whose price, for so in God we trust. Who saw them fall in that blind swirl. Of ravening flame and reeking dust. The spoiler with his life shall pay. When justice at the last demands her day. O oh, tried and proved, whose record stands. Lettered in blood too deep to fade. Take courage. Never in our hands. Shall the avenging sword be stayed. Till you are healed of all your pain. And come with honor to your own again. Owen Seaman. May 19, 1915. The Wife of Flanders. Low and brown barns, thatched and repatched and tattered. Where I had seven sons until today. A little hill of hay your spur has scattered. This is not Paris. You have lost the way. You, staring at your sword to find it brittle. 
surprised at the surprise that was your plan. Who, shaking and breaking barriers not a little. Find never more the death door of Sedan. Must I for more than carnage call you claimant? Paying you a penny for each son you slay? Man, the whole globe in gold were no repayment. For what you have lost. And how shall I repay? What is the price of that red spark that caught me? From a kind farm that never had a name? What is the price of that dead man they brought me? For other dead men do not look the same. How should I pay for one poor graven steeple? Whereon you shattered what you shall not know. How should I pay you, miserable people? How should I pay you everything you owe? Unhappy, can I give you back your honor? Though I forgave, would any man forget? While all the great green land has trampled on her. The treason and terror of the night we met. Not any more in vengeance or in pardon. An old wife bargains for a bean that's hers. You have no word to break, no heart to harden. Ride on and prosper. You have lost your spurs. Gilbert Keith Chesterton 6. Russia and America Russia, America A wind in the world The dark departs The chains now rust that crushed men's flesh and bones Feet tread no more the mildewed prison stones And slavery is lifted from your hearts A wind in the world O company Of darkened Russia, watching long in vain now shall you see the cloud of Russia's pain. Go shrinking out across a summer sky. A wind in the world. Our God shall be. In all the future left, no kingly doll. Decked out with dreadful scepter, steel, and stole. But walk the earth, a man, in charity. A wind in the world. And doubts are blown. To dust along, and the old stars come forth. Stars of a creed to pilgrim father's worth. A field of broken spears and flowers strown. A wind in the world. Now truancy. From the true self is ended. To her part. Steadfast again she moves, and from her heart. A great America cries, death to tyranny. A wind in the world. And we have come. Together, sea by sea. In all the lands. Vision doth move at last, and freedom stands. With brightened wings, and smiles and beckons home. John Galsworthy. To Russia new and free. Land of the martyrs, of the martyr dead. And martyred living, now of noble fame. Long wert thou saddest of the nations, wed. To sorrow as the fire to the flame. Not yet relentless history had rid of Teuton shame. Thou knewest all the gloom of hope deferred. Twixt God and Russia wrong had built such bar. Each by the other could no more be heard. Seen through the cloud, the child's familiar star. That once made heaven near, had made it seem more far. Land of the breaking dawn. No more look back. To that long night that never more can be the sunless dungeon and the exile's track. To the world's dreams of terror let it flee. To gentle April cruel march is now antiquity. Yet, of the past one sacred relic save. That boundary post, twixt Russia and despair. Set where the dead might look upon his grave. Kissed by him with his last breathed Russian air. Keep it to witness to the world what heroes still may dare. Land of new hope, no more the minor key. No more the songs of exile long and lone. Thy tears henceforth be tears of memory. Sing, with the joy the joyless would have known. Who for this visioned happiness so gladly gave their own. Land of the warm heart and the friendly hand. Strike the free chord, no more the muted strings. Forever let the equal record stand. A thousand winters for this spring of springs. That to a warring world, through thee, millennial longing brings. On thy white tablets, cleansed of royal stain. What message to the future mayst thou write? The people's law, the bulwark of their reign. And vigilant liberty, 
of ancient might. And brotherhood, that can alone lead to the loftiest height. Take, then, our hearts rejoicing overflow. Thou newborn daughter of democracy. Whose coming sets the expectant earth aglow. Soon the glad skies thy proud new flag shall see. And hear thy chanted hymns of hope for Russia new and free. Robert Underwood Johnson April, 1917 7. Italy Italy in arms Of all my dreams by night and day One dream will evermore return The dream of Italy in May The sky a brimming azure urn Where lights of amber brood and burn The doves about San Marco's square The swimming Campanile tower The giants hammering out the hour. The palaces, the bright lagoons. The gondolas gliding here and there. Upon the tide that sways and swoons. The domes of San Antonio. Where Padua, mid her mulberry trees. Reclines, Adige's crescent flow. Beneath Verona's balconies. Rich Florence of the Medicis. Siena's star-like streets that climb. From hill to hill. Assisi well. Remembering the holy spell. Of rapt Saint Francis, with her crown. Of battlements, embossed by time. Stern old Perugia looking down. Then, mother of great empires, Rome. City of the majestic past. That o'er far leagues of alien foam. The shadows of her eagles cast. Imperious still, impending, vast the Colosseum's curving line, pillar and arch and colonnade, St. Peter's consecrated shade, and Hadrian's tomb where Tiber strays, the ruins on the Palatine, with all their memories of dead days, and Naples with her sapphire arc, of bay, her perfect sweep of shore, above her, like a demon stark, the dark fire mountain evermore. Looming portentous, as of yore. Fair Capri with her cliffs and caves. Salerno drowsing, mid her vines. And olives, and the shattered shrines. Of Pistum where the grey ghosts tread. And where the wilding rose still waves. As when by Greek girls garlanded. But hark! What sound the ear dismays! Mine Italy, mine Italy! Thou that wert wrapped in peace, the haze of loveliness spread over thee. Yet since the grapple needs must be, I who have wandered in the night, with Dante, Petrarch's Laura known, seen Vallombrosa's groves breeze blown, met Angelo and Raffle, against iconoclastic might, in this grim hour must wish thee well. Clinton Scullard. On the Italian front, MCMXVI. I will die cheering, if I needs must die. So shall my last breath write upon my lips. Viva Italia! When my spirit slips down the great darkness from the mountain sky, and those who shall behold me where I lie shall murmur, Look, you! How his spirit dips from glory into glory. The eclipse of death is vanquished. Lo, his victor cry. Live, thou, upon my lips, Italia mine. The sacred death cry of my frozen clay. Let thy dear light from my dead body shine. And to the passerby thy message say. Echo. Though heaven has made my skies divine. My son's love sanctifies my soil for I. George Edward Woodbury. 8. Australia. Australia to England. By all the deeds to thy dear glory done. By all the life blood, spilt to serve thy need. By all the fettered lives thy touch hath freed. By all thy dream in us anew begun. By all the guerdon English sire to son. Hath given of highest vision, kingliest deed. By all thine agony, of God decreed. For trial and strength, our fate with thine is one. Still dwells thy spirit in our hearts and lips. Honor and life we hold from none but thee. And if we live thy pensioners no more. 
but Sika nations might have men and ships. T is but that when the world is black with war. Thy sons may stand beside thee strong and free. Archibald T. Strong August, 1914. 9. Canada. Canada to England. Great names of thy great captains gone before. Beat with our blood, who have that blood of thee. Raleigh and Grenville, Wolfe, and all the free. Fine souls who dared to front a world in war. Such only may outreach the envious years. Where feebler crowns and fainter stars remove. Nurtured in one remembrance and one love. Too high for passion and too stern for tears. O oh, little all our fathers held for home. Not, not alone thy standards and thy hosts. Lead where thy sons shall follow, motherland. Quick as the north wind, ardent as the foam. Behold. Behold the invulnerable ghosts. Of all past greatnesses about thee stand. Marjorie L. C. Pickthall. Langmark at Ypres. This is the Ballad of Langmark. A story of glory and might. Of the vast Hun horde, and Canada's part. In the great grim fight. It was April fair on the Flanders fields. But the dreadest April then. That ever the years, in their fateful flight. Had brought to this world of men. North and east, a monster wall. The mighty Hun ranks lay. With fort on fort, an iron ring trench. Menacing, grim and grey. And south and west, like a serpent of fire. Serried the British lines. And in between, the dying and dead. And the stench of blood, and the trampled mud. On the fair, sweet Belgian vines. And far to the eastward, harnessed and taut. Like a scimitar, shining and keen. Gleaming out of that ominous gloom. Old France's hosts were seen. When out of the grim Hun lines one night. There rolled a sinister smoke. A strange, weird cloud, like a pale, green shroud. And death lurked in its cloak. On a fiend-like wind it curled along. Over the brave French ranks. Like a monster tree its vapors spread. In hideous, burning banks. Of poisonous fumes that scorched the night. With their sulfurous demon danks. And men went mad with horror, and fled. From that terrible, strangling death. That seemed to sear both body and soul. With its baleful, flaming breath. Till even the little dark men of the South. Who feared neither God nor man. Those fierce, wild fighters of Afric's steppes. Broke their battalions and ran. Ran as they never had run before. Gasping, and fainting for breath. For they knew, T was no human foe that slew. And that hideous smoke meant death. Then red in the reek of that evil cloud. The Hun swept over the plain. And the murderer's dirk did its monster work. Mid the scythe-like shrapnel rain. Till it seemed that at last the brute Hun hordes. Had broken that wall of steel. And that soon, through this breach in the freeman's dike. His trampling hosts would wheel. And sweep to the south in ravaging might. And Europe's peoples again. Be trodden under the tyrant's heel. Like herds, in the Prussian pen. But in that line on the British right. Their master Cora main. Of men who hailed from a far west land. Of mountain and forest and plain. Men new to war and its dreadest deeds. But noble and staunch and true. Men of the open, east and west. Brew of old Britain's brew. These were the men out there that night. When hell loomed close ahead. Who saw that pitiful, hideous rout. And breathed those gases dread. While some went under and some went mad. But never a man there fled. For the word was, Canada, there's to fight. And keep on fighting still. Britain said, fight, and fight they would. Though the devil himself in sulfurious mood. Came over that hideous hill. Yeah, stubborn, they stood, that hero band. Where no soul hoped to live. 
4-5, gainst 80,000 men. Were hopeless odds to give. Yeah, fought they on. T was Friday Eve. When that demon gas drove down. T was Saturday Eve that saw them still. Grimly holding their own. Sunday, Monday, saw them yet. A steadily lessening band. With no surrender, in their hearts. But the dream of a far-off land. Where mother and sister and love would weep. For the hushed heart lying still. But never a thought but to do their part. And work the empire's will. Ringed round, hemmed in, and back to back. They fought there under the dark. And won for empire, God and right. At grim, red landmark. Wonderful battles have shaken this world. Since the dawn God overthrew Dis. Wonderful struggles of right against wrong. Sung in the rhymes of the world's great song. But never a greater than this. Bannockburn, Inkerman, Balaclava. Marathon's godlike stand. But never a more heroic deed. And never a greater warrior breed. In any war man's land. This is the ballad of Langmark. A story of glory and might. Of the vast Hun horde, and Canada's part. In the great, grim fight. Wilfred Campbell. Canadians. With arrows on their quarters and with numbers on their hoofs. With the trampling sound of twenty that re-echoes in the roofs. Low of crest and dull of coat, wan and wild of eye. Through our English village the Canadians go by. Shying at a passing cart, swerving from a car. Tossing up an anxious head to flaunt a snowy star. Racking at a Yankee gate, reaching at the rain. Twenty raw Canadians are tasting life again. Hollow-necked and hollow-flanked, lean of rib and hip. Strained and sick and weary with the wallow of the ship. Glad to smell the turf again, hear the robins call. Tread again the country road they lost at Montreal. Fate may bring them doula and woe, better steeds than they. Sleep beside the English guns a hundred leagues away. But till war hath need of them, lightly lie their reins. Softly fall the feet of them along the English lanes. Will H. Ogilvy. 10. Liege. The Kaiser and Belgium. He said, Thou petty people, let me pass. What canst thou do but bow to me and kneel? But sudden a dry land caught fire like grass. An answer hurtled but from shell and steel. He looked for silence, but a thunder came. Upon him, from Liege a leaden hail. All Belgium flew up at his throat in flame. Till at her gates amazed his legions quail. Take heed, for now on haunted ground they tread. There bowed a mightier warlord to his fall. Fear. Lest that very green grass again grow red. With blood of German now as then with Gaul. If him whom God destroys he maddens first. Then thy destruction slake thy madman's thirst. Stephen Phillips. The Battle of Liege. Now spake the emperor to all his shining battle forces. To the lancers, and the rifles, to the gunners, and the horses. And his pride surged up within him as he saw their banners stream. T is a twelve-day march to Paris, by the road our fathers travelled. And the prize is half an empire when the scarlet roads unraveled. Go you now across the border. God's decree and William's order. Climb the frowning Belgian ridges. With your naked swords agleam. Seize the city of the bridges. Then get on, get on to Paris. To the jeweled streets of Paris. To the lovely woman, Paris, that has driven me to dream. A hundred thousand fighting men. They climbed the frowning ridges. With their flaming swords drawn free. And their penance at their knee. They went up to their desire. To the city of the bridges. With their naked brands outdrawn. Like the lances of the dawn. In a swelling surf of fire. Crawling higher, higher, higher. Till they crumpled up and died. Like a sudden wasted tide. 
and the thunder in their faces beat them down and flung them wide. They had paid a thousand men. Yet they formed and came again. For they heard the silver bugles sounding challenge to their pride. And they rode with swords agleam. For the glory of a dream. And they stormed up to the cannon's mouth and withered there, and died. The daylight lay in ashes. On the blackened western hill. And the dead were calm and still. But the night was torn with gashes. Sudden ragged crimson gashes. And the siege guns snarled and roared. With their flames thrust like a sword. And the tranquil moon came riding on the heaven's silver ford. What a fearful world was there. Tangled in the cold moon's hair. Man and beast lay hurt and screaming. Men must die when kings are dreaming. While within the harried town. Mothers dragged their children down. As the awful rain came screaming. For the glory of a crown. So the morning flung her cloak. Through the hanging pall of smoke. Trimmed with red, it was, and dripping with a deep and angry stain. And the day came walking then. Through a lane of murdered men. And her light fell down before her like a cross upon the plain. But the fort still crowned the height. With a bitter iron crown. They had lived to flame and fight. They had lived to keep the town. And they poured their havoc down. All that day, and all that night. While four times their number came. Pawns that played a bloody game. With a silver trumpeting. For the glory of the king. To the barriers of the thunder and the fury of the flame. So they stormed the iron hill. O'er the sleepers lying still. And their trumpets sang them forward through the dull succeeding dawns. But the thunder flung them wide. And they crumpled up and died. They had waged the war of monarchs, and they died the death of pawns. But the fort still stood. Their breath. Swept the foemen like a blade. Though ten thousand men were paid. To the hungry purse of death. Though the field was wet with blood. Still the bold defences stood. Stood. And the king came out with his bodyguard at the day's departing gleam. And the moon rode up behind the smoke and showed the king his dream. Dana Burnett. 11. Verdun. Men of Verdun. There are five men in the moonlight. That by their shadows stand. Three hobble humped on crutches. And two lack each a hand. Frogs somewhere near the roadside. Chorus their chant absorbed. But a hush breathes out of the dreamlight. That far in heaven is orbed. It is gentle as sleep falling. And wide as thought can span. The ancient peace and wonder. That brims the heart of man. Beyond the hills it shines now. On no peace but the dead. On reek of trenches thundershocked. Tense fury of wills in wrestle locked. A chaos crumbled red. The five men in the moonlight. Chat, joke, or gaze apart. They talk of days and comrades. But each one hides his heart. They wear clean cap and tunic. As when they went to war. A gleam comes where the metals pinned. But they will fight no more. The shadows, maimed and antic. Gesture and shape distort. Like mockery of a demon dumb. Out of the hell din whence they come. That dogs them for his sport. But as if dead men were risen. And stood before me there. With a terrible fame about them blown. In beams of spectral air. I see them. Men transfigured. As in a dream, dilate. Fabulous with the titan throb. Of battling Europe's fate. For histories hushed before them. And legend flames afresh. Verdun, the name of thunder. Is written on their flesh. Lawrence Binion. Verdun. Three hundred thousand men, but not enough. To break this township on a winding stream. More yet must fall, and more, ere the red stuff. That built a nation's manhood may redeem. 
the master's hopes and realize his dream. They pave the way to Verdun, on their dust. The Hohenzollerns mount and, hand in hand. Gaze haggard south, for yet another thrust. And higher hills must heap, ere they may stand. To feed their eyes upon the promised land. One barrow, born of women, lifts them high. Built up of many a thousand human dead. Nursed on their mother's bosoms, now they lie. A Golgotha, all shattered, torn and sped. A mountain for these royal feet to tread. A Golgotha, upon whose carrion clay. Justice of myriad men still in the womb. Shall heave two crosses, crucify and flay. Two memories accursed, then in the tomb. Of worldwide execration give them room. Verdun. A clarion thy name shall ring. Adown the ages and the nations see. Thy monuments of glory. Now we bring. Thank offering and bend the reverend knee. Thou star upon the crown of liberty. Eden Philpots. Guns of Verdun. Guns of Verdun point to Metz. From the plated parapets. Guns of Metz grin back again. O'er the fields of fair Lorraine. Guns of Metz are long and grey. Growling through a summer day. Guns of Verdun, grey and long. Boom an echo of their song. Guns of Metz to Verdun roar. Sisters, you shall foot the score. Guns of Verdun say to Metz. Fear not, for we pay our debts. Guns of Metz they grumble, when. Guns of Verdun answer then. Sisters, when to guard Lorraine. Gunners lay you east again. Patrick R. Chalmers. 12. Oxford. The Spires of Oxford. I saw the Spires of Oxford. As I was passing by. The grey spires of Oxford. Against the pearl grey sky. My heart was with the Oxford men. Who went abroad to die. The years go fast in Oxford. The golden years and gay. The hoary colleges look down. On careless boys at play. But when the bugles sounded war. They put their games away. They left the peaceful river. The cricket field, the quad. The shaven lawns of Oxford. To seek a bloody sod. They gave their merry youth away. For country and for God. God rest you, happy gentlemen. Who laid your good lives down. Who took the khaki and the gun. Instead of cap and gown. God bring you to a fairer place. Than even Oxford town. Winifred M. Letts. Oxford, Indiana wartime. The boat race will not be held this year, 1915. The whole of last year's Oxford 8 and the great majority of the cricket and football teams are serving the king. Under the towpath past the barges. Never an eight goes flashing by. Never a blatant coach on the marge is. Urging his crew to do or die. Never the critic we knew enlarges. Fluent, on how and why. Once by the Ifley Road November. Welcomed the football men aglow. Covered with mud, as you'll remember. Eager to vanquish Oxford's foe. Where are the teams of last December? Gone, where they had to go. Where are her sons who waged at cricket? Warfare against the foeman friend. Far from the parks, on a harder wicket. Still they attack and still defend. Playing a greater game, they'll stick it. Fearless until the end. Oxford's goodliest children leave her. Hastily thrusting books aside. Still the hurrying weeks bereave her. Filling her heart with joy and pride. Only the thought of you can grieve her. You who have fought and died. W. Snow. Oxford revisited in wartime. Beneath fair Magdalene's storied towers. I wander in a dream. And hear the mellow chimes float out. O'er Charwell's icebound stream. Throstle and blackbird stiff with cold. Hop on the frozen grass. Among the aged, upright oaks. The dun deer slowly pass. 
the chapel organ rolls and swells. And voices still praise God. But ah! The thought of youthful friends. Who lie beneath the sod. Now wounded men with gallant eyes. Go hobbling down the street. And nurses from the hospitals. Speed by with tireless feet. The town is full of uniforms. And through the stormy sky. Frightening the rooks from the tallest trees. The aeroplanes roar by. The older faces still are here. More grave and true and kind. Ennobled by the steadfast toil. Of patient heart and mind. And old-time friends are dearer grown. To fill a double place. Unshaken faith makes glorious. Each forward-looking face. Old Oxford walls are grey and worn. She knows the truth of tears. But today she stands in her ancient pride. Crowned with eternal years. Gone are her sons, yet her heart is glad. In the glory of their youth. For she brought them forth to live or die. By freedom, justice, truth. Cold moonlight falls on silent towers. The young ghosts walk with the old. But Oxford dreams of the dawn of May. And her heart is free and bold. Tertius Van Dyke Magdalen College, January, 1917. 13. Reflections. Sonnets written in the fall of 1914. I. Awake, ye nations, slumbering supine. Who round inring the European fray. Heard ye the trumpet sound. The day. The day. The last that shall on England's empire shine. The parliament that broke the right divine. Shall see her realm of reason swept away. And lesser nations shall the sword obey. The sword o'er all carve the great world's design. So on the English channel boasts the foe. On whose imperial brow death's helmet nods. Look where his hosts o'er bloody Belgium go. And mix a nation's past with blazing sods. A kingdom's waste. A people's homeless woe. Man's broken word, and violated gods. 2. Far fall the day when England's realm shall see. The sunset of dominion. Her increase. Abolishes the man-dividing seas. And frames the brotherhood on earth to be. She, in free peoples planting sovereignty. Orbs half the civil world in British peace. And though time dispossess her, and she cease. Rome like she greatens in man's memory. Oh, many a crown shall sink in war's turmoil. And many a new republic light the sky. Fleets sweep the ocean, nations till the soil. Genius be born and generations die. Orient and Occident together toil. Ere such a mighty work man rears on high. 3. Hearken, the feet of the destroyer tread. The winepress of the nations, fast the blood. Pours from the side of Europe. In the flood. On the septentrional watershed. The rivers of fair France are running red. England, the mother area of our brood. That on the summit of dominion stood. Shakes in the blast, heaven battles overhead. Lift up thy head, O reams, of ages air. That treasured up in thee their glorious sum. Upon whose brow, prophetically fair. Flamed the great morrow of the world to come. Haunt with thy beauty this volcanic air. Ere yet thou close, O flower of Christendom. 4. As when the shadow of the sun's eclipse. Sweeps on the earth, and spreads a spectral air. As if the universe were dying there. On continent and how the darkness dips. Unwanted gloom, and on the Atlantic slips. So in the night the Belgian cities flare. Horizon wide, the wandering people fare. Along the roads, and load the fleeing ships. And westward borne that planetary sweep. Darkening o'er England and her times to be. Already steps upon the ocean deep. Watch well, my country, that unearthly sea. Lest when thou thinkest not, and in thy sleep. Unapt for war, that gloom enchid out thee. 
v. I pray for peace, yet peace is but a prayer. How many wars have been in my brief years? All races and all faiths, both hemispheres. My eyes have seen embattled everywhere. The wide earth through, yet do I not despair. Of peace, that slowly through far ages nears. Though not to me the golden morn appears. My faith is perfect in time's issue fair. For man doth build on an eternal scale. And his ideals are framed of hope deferred. The millennium came not. Yet Christ did not fail. Though ever unaccomplished is his word. Him Prince of Peace, though unenthroned, we hail. Supreme when in all bosoms he be heard. 6. This is my faith, and my mind's heritage. Wherein I toil, though in a lonely place. Who yet worldwide surveyed the human race. Unequal from wild nature disengage. Body and soul, and life's old strife assuage. Still must abide, till heaven perfect its grace. And love grown wisdom sweeten in man's face. Alike the Christian and the heathen rage. The tutelary genius of mankind. Ripens by slow degrees the final state. That in the soul shall its foundations find. And only in victorious love grow great. Patient the heart must be, humble the mind. That doth the greater births of time await. 7. Whence not unmoved I see the nations form. From Dover to the fountains of the Rhine. A hundred leagues, the scarlet battle line. And by the Vistula great armies swarm. A vaster flood. Rather my breast grows warm. Seeing all peoples of the earth combine. Under one standard, with one countersign. Grown brothers in the universal storm. And never through the wide world yet there rang. A mightier summons. O thou who from the side. Of Athens and the loins of Kassar sprang. Strike, Europe, with half the coming world allied. For those ideals for which, since Homer sang. The hosts of thirty centuries have died. George Edward Woodbury. The War Films. O living pictures of the dead. O songs without a sound. O fellowship whose phantom tread. Hallows a phantom ground. How in a gleam have these revealed. The faith we had not found. We have sought God in a cloudy heaven. We have passed by God on earth. His seven sins and his sorrows seven. His wayworn mood and mirth. Like a ragged cloak have hid from us. The secret of his birth. Brother of men, when now I see. The lads go forth in line. Thou knowest my heart is hungry in me. As for thy bread and wine. Thou knowest my heart is bowed in me. To take their death for mine. Henry Newbolt. The Searchlights. Political morality differs from individual morality, because there is no power above the state that, General von Bernhard. Shadow by shadow, stripped for fight. The lean black cruisers search the sea. Night long their level shafts of light. Revolve, and find no enemy. Only they know each leaping wave. May hide the lightning, and their grave. And in the land they guard so well. Is there no silent watch to keep? An age is dying, and the bell. Rings midnight on a vaster deep. But over all its waves, once more. The searchlights move, from shore to shore. And captains that we thought were dead. And dreamers that we thought were dumb. And voices that we thought were fled. Arise, and call us, and we come. And, search in thine own soul, they cry. For there, too, lurks thine enemy. Search for the foe in thine own soul. The sloth, the intellectual pride. The trivial jest that veils the goal. For which, our fathers lived and died. The lawless dreams, the cynic art. That rend thy nobler self apart. Not far, not far into the night. These level swords of light can pierce. Yet for her faith does England fight. Her faith in this our universe. 
believing truth and justice draw. From founts of everlasting law. The law that rules the stars, our stay. Our compass through the world's wide sea. The one sure light, the one sure way. The one firm base of liberty. The one firm road that men have trod. Through chaos to the throne of God. Therefore a power above the state. The unconquerable power, returns. The fire, the fire that made her great. Once more upon her altar burns. Once more, redeemed and healed and whole. She moves to the eternal goal. Alfred Noyes. Christmas, 1915. Now is the midnight of the nations, dark. Even as death, beside her blood dark seas. Earth, like a mother in birth agonies. Screams in her travail, and the planets hark. Her million-throated terror. Naked, stark. Her torso writhes enormous, and her knees. Shudder against the shadowed Pleiades. Wrenching the night's imponderable arc. Christ. What shall be delivered to the morn? Out of these pangs, if ever indeed another. Morn shall succeed this night, or this vast mother. Survive to know the blood-spent offspring, torn. From her racked flesh, what splendor from the smother. What new-winged world, or mangled god stillborn. Percy Mackay. Men who march away. Song of the soldiers. What of the faith and fire within us. Men who march away. Ere the barncocks say. Night is growing gray. To hazards whence no tears can win us. What of the faith and fire within us. Men who march away. Is it a purblind prank, oh think you. Friend with the musing eye. Who watch us stepping by. With doubt and dolorous sigh. Can much pondering so hoodwink you? Is it a purblind prank, oh think you? Friend with the musing eye. Nay. We see well what we are doing. Though some may not see. Dalliers as they be. England's need are we. Her distress would leave us ruing. Nay. We well see what we are doing. Though some may not see. In our heart of hearts believing. Victory crowns the just. And that braggarts must. Surely bite the dust. Press we to the field ungrieving. In our heart of hearts believing. Victory crowns the just. Hence the faith and fire within us. Men who march away. Ere the barncocks say. Night is growing gray. To hazards whence no tears can win us. Hence the faith and fire within us. Men who march away. Thomas Hardy September 5, 1914 We willed it not. We willed it not. We have not lived in hate. Loving too well the shires of England thrown. From sea to sea to covet your estate. Or wish one flight of fortune from your throne. We had grown proud because the nation stood. Hoping together against the calumny. That, tortured of its old barbarian blood. Barbarian still the heart of man should be. Builders there are who name you overlord. Building with us the citadels of light. Who hold as we this chartered sin abhorred. And cry you risen Caesar of the night. Beethoven speaks with Milton on this day. And Shakespeare's word with Goethe's beats the sky. In witness of the birthright you betray. In witness of the vision you deny. We love the hearth, the quiet hills, the song. The friendly gossip come from every land. And very peace were now a nameless wrong. You thrust this bitter quarrel to our hand. For this your pride the tragic armies go. And the grim navies watch along the seas. You trade in death, you mock at life, you throw. To God the tumult of your blasphemies. You rob us of our love right. It is said. In treason to the world, you are enthroned. We rise, and, by the yet ungathered dead. Not lightly shall the treason be atoned. John Drinkwater. The death of peace. Now slowly sinks the day-long laboring sun. 
behind the tranquil trees and old church tower. And we who watch him know our day is done. For us too comes the evening, and the hour. The sunbeams slanting through those ancient trees. The sunlit lichens burning on the byre. The lark descending, and the homing bees. Proclaim the sweet relief all things desire. Golden the river brims beneath the west. And holy peace to all the world is given. The songless stock dove preens her ruddied breast. The blue smoke windeth like a prayer to heaven. O old, old England, land of golden peace. Thy fields are spun with gossamers of gold. And golden garners gather thy increase. And plenty crowns thy loveliness untold. By sunlight or by starlight ever thou. Art excellent in beauty manifold. The still star victory ever gems thy brow. Age cannot age thee, ages make thee old. Thy beauty brightens with the evening sun. Across the long-lit meads and distant spire. So sleep thou well, like his thy labor done. Rest in thy glory as he rests in fire. But even in this hour of soft repose. A gentle sadness chides us like a friend. The sorrow of the joy that overflows. The burden of the beauty that must end. And from the fading sunset comes a cry. And in the twilight voices wailing past. Like wild swans calling, when we rest we die. And woe to them that linger and are last. And as the sun sinks, sudden in heave and new born. There shines an armed angel like a star. Who cries above the darkling world in scorn. God comes to judgment. Learn ye what ye are. From fire to umber fades the sunset gold. From umber into silver and twilight. The infant flowers their orisons have told. And turn together folded for the night. The garden urns are black against the eve. The white moth flitters through the fragrant glooms. How beautiful the heave and s, but yet we grieve. And wander restless from the lighted rooms. For through the world tonight a murmur thrills. As at some newborn prodigy of time. Peace dies like twilight bleeding on the hills. And darkness creeps to hide the hateful crime. Art thou no more, O maiden heaven born? O peace, bright angel of the windless morn! Who comest down to bless our furrowed fields? Or stand like beauty smiling mid the corn? Mistress of mirth and ease and summer dreams. Who lingerest among the woods and streams. To help us heap the harvest neath the moon. And homeward laughing lead the lumbering teams. Who teachest to our children thy wise lore. Who keepest full the goodman's golden store. Who crownest life with plenty, death with flores. Peace, queen of kindness, but of earth, no more. Not thine but ours the fault, thy care was vain. For this that we have done be ours the pain. Thou gayest much, as he who gave us all. And as we slew him for it thou art slain. He then left to men the moulding of their fate. To live as wolves or pile the pillared state. Like boars and bears to grunt and growl in mire. Or dwell aloft, effulgent gods, elate. Thou liftedst us, we slew and with thee fell. From golden thrones of wisdom weeping fell. Fate rends the chaplets from our feeble brows. The spires of heaven fade in fogs of hell. She faints, she falls, her dying eyes are dim. Her fingers play with those bright buds she bore. To please us, but that she can bring no more. And dying yet she smiles, as Christ on him. Who slew him slain. Her eyes so beauteous are lit with tears shed, not for herself but us. The gentle beings of the hearth and home. The lovely dryads of her isled woods. The angels that do dwell in solitudes. Where she dwelleth, and joyous spirits that roam. To bless her bleeding flocks and fruitful lands. Are gathered there to weep, and kiss her dying hands. Look, look, they cry, she is not dead, she breathes. And we have staunched the damned wound and deep. The cavern carven wound. She doth but sleep. 
and will awake. Bring wine, and new wound wreaths. Wherewith to crown awaking her dear head. And make her queen again. But no, for peace was dead. And then there came black lords, and dwarfs obscene. With lavish tongues, and trolls. And treacherous things. Like loose-lipped counselors and cruel kings. Who sharpen lies and daggers subterrene. And flashed their evil eyes and weeping cried. We ruled the world for peace. By her own hand she died. In secret he made sharp the bitter blade. And poisoned it with bane of lies and drew. And stabbed, O oh God. The cruel cripple slew. And cowards fled or lent him trembling aid. She fell and died, in all the tale of time. The direst deed e'er done, the most accursed crime. Ronald Ross. In wartime. An American homeward bound. Further and further we leave the scene. Of war, and of England's care. I try to keep my mind serene. But my heart stays there. For a distant song of pain and wrong. My spirit doth deep confuse. And I sit all day on the deck, and long. And long for news. I seem to see them in battle line. Heroes with hearts of gold. But of their victory a sign. The fates withhold. And the hours too tardy footed pass. The voiceless hush grows dense. Mid the imaginings, alas. That feed suspense. Oh, might I lie on the wind, or fly. In the willful seabird's track. Would I hurry on, with a homesick cry. Or hasten back. Florence Earl Coates. The anvil. Burned from the oars rejected dross. The iron whitens in the heat. With plangent strokes of pain and loss. The hammers on the iron beat. Searched by the fire, through death and dole. We feel the iron in our soul. O oh, dreadful forge! If torn and bruised. The heart, more urgent comes our cry. Not to be spared but to be used. Brain, sinew, and spirit, before we die. Beat out the iron, edge it keen. And shape us to the end we mean. Lawrence Binion. The fool rings his bells. Come, death, I'd have a word with thee. And thou, poor innocency. And love, a lad with broken wing. And pity, too. The fool shall sing to you. As fools will sing. I, music hath small sense. And a tune soon told. And earth is old. And my poor wits are dense. Yet have I secrets, dark, my dear. To breathe you all, come near. And lest some hideous listener tells. I'll ring my bells. They're all at war. Yes, yes, their bodies go. Neath burning sun and icy star. To chaunted songs of woe. Dragging cold cannon through a mud. Of rain and blood. The new moon glinting hard on eyes. Wide with insanities. Hush. I use words. I hardly know the meaning of. And the mute birds. Are glancing at love. From out their shade of leaf and flower. Trembling at treacheries. Which even in noonday cower. Heed, heed not what I said. Of frenzied hosts of men. More fools than I. On envy, hatred fed. Who kill, and die. Spake I not plainly, then. Yet pity whispered, why. Thou silly thing, off to thy daisies go. Mine was not news for child to know. And death, no ears hath. He hath supped where creep. Eyeless worms in hush of sleep. Yet, when he smiles, the hand he draws. Athwart his grinning jaws. Faintly their thin bones rattle, and. There, there. Hearken how my bells in the air. Drive away care. Nay, but a dream I had. Of a world all mad. Not a simple happy mad like me. 
who am mad like an empty scene. Of water and willow tree. Where the wind hath been. But that foul Satan mad. Who rots in his own head. And counts the dead. Not honest one, and two. But for the ghosts they were. Brave, faithful, true. When, head in air. In earth's dear green and blue. Heaven they did share. With beauty who bade them there. There, now. He goes. Old bones, I've wearied him. I, and the light doth dim. And asleeps the rose. And tired innocence. In dreams is hence. Come, love, my lad. Nodding that drowsy head. T is time thy prayers were said. Walter de la Mer. The Road to Dieppe. Concerning the experiences of a journey on foot through the night of. August 4, 1914, the night after the formal declaration of war between. England and Germany, from a town near Amiens, in France, to Dieppe. A distance of somewhat more than forty miles. Before I knew, the dawn was on the road. Close at my side, so silently he came. Nor gave a sign of salutation, save. To touch with light my sleeve and make the way. Appear as if a shining countenance. Had looked on it. Strange was this radiant youth. As I, to these fair, fertile parts of France. Where Caesar with his legions once had passed. And where the Kaiser Zulan yet would pass. Or ere another moon should cope with clouds. For mastery of these same fields. Tonight. And but a month has gone since I walked there. Well might the Kaiser write, as Caesar wrote. In his new commentaries on a Gallic war. Fortissimi Belgi. A moon ago. Who would have then divined that dead would lie. Like swaths of grain beneath the harvest moon. Upon these lands the ancient Belgi held. From Normandy beyond renowned Liege. But it was out of that dread August night. From which all Europe woke to war, that we. This beautiful dawn youth, and I, had come. He from afar. Beyond grim Petrograd. He'd waked the Mujik from his peaceful dreams. Bid the Muezzin call to morning prayer. Where minarets rise o'er the golden horn. And driven shadows from the Prussian march. To lie beneath the lindens of the stot. Softly he'd stirred the bells to ring at reams. He'd knocked at high Montmartre, hardly asleep. Heard the sweet carillon of doomed Louvain. Boylike, had tarried for a moment's play. Amid the traceries of Amiens. And then was hastening on the road to Dieppe. When he overtook me drowsy from the hours. Through which I'd walked. With no companions else. Then ghostly kilometer posts that stood. As sentinels of space along the way. Often, in doubt, I'd pause to question one. With nervous hands, as they who read moon type. And more than once I'd caught a moment's sleep. Beside the highway, in the dripping grass. While one of these white sentinels stood guard. Knowing me for a friend, who loves the road. And best of all by night. When wheels do sleep. And stars alone do walk abroad. But once. Three watchful shadows, deeper than the dark. Laid hands on me and searched me for the marks. Of traitor or of spy, only to find. Over my heart the badge of loyalty. With wish for bon voyage they gave me o'er. To the white guards who led me on again. Thus dawn o'ertook me and with magic speech. Made me forget the night as we strode on. Where'er he looked a miracle was wrought. A tree grew from the darkness at a glance. A hut was thatched, a new chateau was reared. Of stone, as weathered as the church at Cannes. Grey blooms were colored suddenly in red. A flag was flung across the eastern sky. Nearer at hand, he made me then aware. Of peasant women bending in the fields. Cradling and gleaning by the first scant light. Their sons and husbands somewhere o'er the edge. 
of these green golden fields which they had sowed. But will not reap. Out somewhere on the march. God but knows where and if they come again. One fallow field he pointed out to me. Where but the day before a peasant ploughed. Dreaming of next year's fruit, and there his plough. Stood now midfield, his horses commandeered. A monstrous sable crow perched on the beam. Before I knew, the dawn was on the road. Far from my side, so silently he went. Catching his golden helmet as he ran. And hastening on along the dun straight way. Where old men's sabots now began to clack. And withered women, knitting. Led their cows. On, on to call the men of Kitchener. Down to their coasts, I shouting after him. O oh dawn, would you had let the world sleep on. Till all its armament were turned to rust. Nor waked it to this day of hideous hate. Of man's red murder and of woman's woe. Famished and lame, I came at last to Dieppe. But dawn had made his way across the sea. And, as I climbed with heavy feet the cliff. Was even then upon the sky-built towers. Of that great capital where nations all. Teuton, Italian, Gallic, English. Slav. Forget long hates in one consummate faith. John Finley. To fellow travelers in Greece. March September, 1914. Tea was in the piping tune of peace. We trod the sacred soil of Greece. Nor thought, where the Elysis runs. Of Teuton craft or Teuton guns. Nor dreamt that, ere the year was spent. Their iron challenge insolent. Would round the world's horizons pour. From Europe to the Australian shore. The tides of war had ebbed away. From Trachis and Thermopylae. Long centuries had come and gone. Since that fierce day at Marathon. Freedom was firmly based, and we. Walled by our own encircling sea. The ancient passions dead, and men. Battled with ledger and with pen. So seemed it, but to them alone. The wisdom of the gods is known. Lest freedom's price decline, from far. Zeus hurled the thunderbolt of war. And so once more the Persians steal. The armies of the Greeks must feel. And once again as Xerxes know. The virtue of a Spartan foe. Thus may the cloudy fates unrolled. Retrace the starry circles old. And the recurrent heavens decree. A periclean dynasty. W. MacNeil Dixon. When there is peace. When there is peace our land no more. Will be the land we knew of yore. Thus do our facile seers foretell. The truth that none can buy or sell. And e'en the wisest must ignore. When we have bled at every pore. Shall we still strive for gear and store? Will it be heaven? Will it be hell? When there is peace. This let us pray for, this implore. That all base dreams thrust out at door. We may in loftier aims excel. And, like men waking from a spell. Grow stronger, nobler, than before. When there is peace. Austin Dobson. A prayer in time of war. The war will change many things in art and life, and among them, it is to be hoped, many of our own ideas as to what is, and what is not, intellectual. Thou, whose deep ways are in the sea. Whose footsteps are not known. Tonight a world that turned from thee. Is waiting, at thy throne. The towering babbles that we raised. Where scoffing sophists brawl. The little antichrists we praised. The night is on them all. The fool hath said. The fool hath said. And we, who deemed him wise. We who believe that thou wast dead. How should we seek thine eyes? How should we seek to thee for power? Who scorned thee yesterday? How should we kneel, in this dread hour? Lord, teach us how to pray. Grant us the single heart, once more. That mocks no sacred thing. The sword of truth our fathers wore. When thou wast Lord and King. 
Let darkness unto darkness tell. Our deep unspoken prayer. For, while our souls in darkness dwell, we know that Thou art there. Alfred Noyes Then and now When battles were fought With a chivalrous sense of should and ought In spirit men said And we quick or dead Honor is some reward Let us fight fair, for our own best or worst So, gentlemen of the guard Fire first In the open they stood Man to man in his knightlyhood they would not deign to profit by a stain on the honorable rules, knowing that practice perfidy no man durst, who in the heroic schools was nursed. But now, behold, what is war with those where honor is not? Rama laments. It's dead innocence. Herod howls, sly slaughter. Rules now. Let us, by modes once called accursed. Overhead, under water. Stab first. Thomas Hardy. The Kaiser and God. I rejoice with you in Wilhelm's first victory. How magnificently God supported him. Telegram from the Kaiser to the Crown Princess. Led by Wilhelm, as you tell. God has done extremely well. You with patronizing nod. Show that you approve of God. Kaiser, face a question new. This, does God approve of you? Broken pledges, treaties torn. Your first page of war adorn. We on fouler things must look. Who read further in that book? Where you did in time of war. All that you in peace forswore. Where you, barbarously wise. Bade your soldiers terrorize. Where you made, the deed was fine. Women screen your firing line. Villages burn down to dust. Torture, murder, bestial lust. Filth too foul for printer's ink. Crime from which the apes would shrink. Strange the offerings that you press. On the God of righteousness. Kaiser, when you decorate. Sons or friends who serve your state. Not that iron cross bestow, but a cross of wood, and so. So remind the world that you have made Calvary anew. Kaiser, when you'd kneel in prayer, look upon your hands, and there. Let that deep and awful stain from the wood of children slain burn your very soul with shame till you dare not breathe that name that now you glibly advertise. God is one of your allies. Impious braggart, you forget. God is not your conscript yet. You shall learn in dumb amaze. That his ways are not your ways. That the mire through which you trod. Is not the high white road of God. To whom, whichever way the combat rolls, we, fighting to the end, commend our souls. Bury pain. The Superman. The horror-haunted Belgian plains riven by shot and shell. Are strewn with her undaunted sons who stayed the jaws of hell. In every sunny vale of France death is the countersign. The purest blood in Britain's veins is being poured like wine. Far, far across the crimsoned map the impassioned armies sweep. Destruction flashes down the sky and penetrates the deep. The dreadnought knows the silent dread, and sees incarnadine. Attest the carnival of strife, the madman's battle scene. Relentless, savage, hot, and grim the infuriate columns press. Where terror simulates disdain and danger is largest. Where greedy youth claims death for bride and agony seems bliss. It is the cause, the cause, my soul. Which sanctifies all this. Ride, Cossacks, ride. Charge, Turcos, charge. The fateful hour has come. Let all the guns of Britain roar or be forever dumb. The Superman has burst his bonds. With culture flag unfurled. And prayer on lip he runs amuck, imperiling the world. The impious creed that might is right in him personified. Bids all creation bend before the insatiate Teuton pride. 
which, nourished on Valhalla dreams of empire unconfined, would make the cannon and the sword the despots of mankind. Efficient, thorough, strong, and brave, his vision is to kill. Force is the hearthstone of his might, the pole star of his will. His forges glow malevolent, their minions never tire. To deck the goddess of his lust whose twins are blood and fire. O world grown sick with butchery and manifold distress. O broken Belgium robbed of all save grief and ghastliness. Should Prussian power enslave the world and arrogance prevail. Let chaos come, let Moloch rule, and Christ give place to Baal. Robert Grant Three Hills There is a hill in England. Green fields and a school I know. Where the balls fly fast in summer. And the whispering elm trees grow. A little hill, a dear hill. And the playing fields below. There is a hill in Flanders. Heaped with a thousand slain. Where the shells fly night and noontide. And the ghosts that died in vain. A little hill, a hard hill. To the souls that died in pain. There is a hill in Jewry. Three crosses pierce the sky. On the midmost he is dying. To save all those who die. A little hill, a kind hill. To souls in jeopardy. Everard Owen Harrow, December, 1915. 14. Incidents and Aspects. The Return. I heard the rumbling guns. I saw the smoke. The unintelligible shock of hosts that still. Far off, unseeing, strove and strove again. And beauty flying naked down the hill. From morn to eve, and the stern night cried peace. And shut the strife in darkness, all was still. Then slowly crept a triumph on the dark. And I heard beauty singing up the hill. John Freeman. The mobilization in Brittany. I. It was silent in the street. I did not know until a woman told me. Sobbing over the muslin she sold me. Then I went out and walked to the square. And saw a few dazed people standing there. And then the drums beat, the drums beat. Oh then the drums beat. And hurrying, stumbling through the street. Came the hurrying stumbling feet. Oh I have heard the drums beat. For war. I have heard the townsfolk come. I have heard the roll and thunder of the nearest drum. As the drummer stopped and cried, Here. Be strong. The summons comes. Prepare. Closing he prayed us to be calm. And there was calm in my heart of the desert, of the Dead Sea. Of vast plains of the west before the coming storm. And there was calm in their eyes like the last calm that shall be. And then the drum beat. The fatal drum, beat. And the drummer marched through the street. And down to another square. And the drummer above took up the beat. And sent it onward where. Huddled, we stood and heard the drums roll. And then a bell began to toll. Oh I have heard the thunder of drums. Crashing into simple poor homes. I have heard the drums roll, farewell. I have heard the tolling cathedral bell. Will it ever peal again? Shall I ever smile or feel again? What was joy? What was pain? For I have heard the drums beat. I have seen the drummer striding from street to street. Crying, be strong. Hear what I must tell. While the drums roared and rolled and beat. For war. 2. Last night the men of this region were leaving. Now they are far. Rough and strong they are, proud and gay they are. So this is the way of war. The train was full and we all shouted as it pulled away. They sang an old war song, they were true to themselves, they were gay. We might have thought they were going for a holiday. Except for something in the air. Except for the weeping of the ruddy old women of Finisterre. The younger women do not weep. They dream and stare. They seem to be walking in dreams. They seem not to know. It is their homes, their happiness, vanishing so. 
Every strong man between twenty and forty must go. They sang an old war song. I have heard it often in other days. But never before when war was walking the world's highways. They sang, they shouted, the Marseillaise. The train went and another has gone, but none, coming, has brought word. Though you may know, you, out in the world, we have not heard. We are not sure that the great battalions have stirred. Except for something, something in the air. Except for the weeping of the wild old women of Finisterre. How long will the others dream and stare? The train went. The strong men of this region are all away, afar. Rough and strong they are, proud and gay they are. So this is the way of war. Grace Fallow Norton. The Toy Band. A Song of the Great Retreat. Dreary lay the long road, dreary lay the town. Lights out and never a glint, O oh, moon. Weary lay the stragglers, half a thousand down. Sad sighed the weary big dragoon. Oh! If I'd a drum here to make them take the road again. Oh! If I'd a fife to wheedle, come, boys, come. You that mean to fight it out, wake and take your load again. Fall in. Fall in. Follow the fife and drum. Hey, but here's a toy shop, here's a drum for me. Penny whistles too to play the tune. Half a thousand dead men soon shall hear and see. We're a band, said the weary big dragoon. Rub it up. Rub it up. Wake and take the road again. Weedle deedle deedle dee, come, boys, come. You that mean to fight it out, wake and take your load again. Fall in. Fall in. Follow the fife and drum. Cheerly goes the dark road, cheerly goes the night. Cheerly goes the blood to keep the beat. Half a thousand dead men marching on to fight. With a little penny drum to lift their feet. Rub it up. Rub it up. Wake and take the road again. Weedle deedle deedle dee, come, boys, come. You that mean to fight it out, wake and take your load again. Fall in. Fall in. Follow the fife and drum. As long as there's an Englishman to ask a tale of me. As long as I can tell the tale aright. We'll not forget the penny whistles wheedle deedle dee. And the big dragoon a beating down the night. Rub it up. Rub it up. Wake and take the road again. Wheedle deedle deedle dee, come, boys, come. You that mean to fight it out, wake and take your load again. Fall in. Fall in. Follow the fife and drum. Henry Newbolt. Thomas of the Light Heart. Facing the guns, he jokes as well. As any judge upon the bench. Between the crash of shell and shell. His laughter rings along the trench. He seems immensely tickled by a. Projectile which he calls a, Black Maria. He whistles down the day-long road. And, when the chilly shadows fall. And heavier hangs the weary load. Is he downhearted? Not at all. T is then he takes a light and airy. View of the tedious route to Tipperary. His songs are not exactly hymns. He never learned them in the choir. And yet they brace his dragging limbs. Although they miss the sacred fire. Although his choice and cherished gems. Do not include the watch upon the Thames. He takes to fighting as a game. He does no talking, through his hat. Of holy missions, all the same. He has his faith, be sure of that. He'll not disgrace his sporting breed. Nor play what isn't cricket. There's his creed. Owen Seaman October, 1914. In the trenches. As I lay in the trenches. Under the hunter's moon. My mind ran to the lenches. Cut in a Wiltshire down. I saw their long black shadows. The beaches in the lane. The grey church in the meadows. And my white cottage, plain. Thinks I, the down lies dreaming. Under that hot moon's eye. Which sees the shells fly screaming. 
And men and horses die. And what makes she, I wonder? Of the horror and the blood. And what's her luck, to sunder? The evil from the good? T was more than I could compass. For how was I to think? With such infernal rumpus. In such a blasted stink. But here's a thought to tally. With t'other. That moon sees. A shrouded German valley. With woods and ghostly trees. And maybe there's a river. As we have got at home. With poplar trees a quiver. And clots of whirling foam. And over there some fellow. A German and a foe. Whose gills are turning yellow. As sure as mine are so. Watches that riding glory. Apparelled in her gold. And craves to hear the story. Her frozen lips enfold. And if he sees as clearly. As I do where her shrine. Must fall, he longs as dearly. With heart as full as mine. Maurice Hewlett. The guards came through. Men of the twenty-first. Up by the chalk pit wood. Weak with our wounds and our thirst. Wanting our sleep and our food. After a day and a night. God, shall we ever forget. Beaten and broke in the fight. But sticking it, sticking it yet. Trying to hold the line. Fainting and spent and done. Always the thud and the whine. Always the yell of the Hun. Northumberland, Lancaster, York. Durham and Somerset. Fighting alone, worn to the bone. But sticking it, sticking it yet. Never a message of hope. Never a word of cheer. Fronting hill, seventies shell-swept slope. With the dull dead plain in our rear. Always the whine of the shell. Always the roar of its burst. Always the tortures of hell. As waiting and wincing we cursed. Our luck and the guns and the bosh. When our corporal shouted, stand to. And I heard some one cry, clear the front for the guards. And the guards came through. Our throats they were parched and hot. But Lord, if you'd heard the cheers. Irish and Welsh and Scot. Coldstream and Grenadiers. Two brigades, if you please. Dressing as straight as a hem. We, we were down on our knees. Praying for us and for them. Lord, I could speak for a week. But how could you understand? How should your cheeks be wet? Such feelings don't come to you. But when can me or my mates forget? When the guards came through. Five yards left extend. It passed from rank to rank. Line after line with never a bend. And a touch of the London swank. A trifle of swank and dash. Cool as a home parade. Twinkle and glitter and flash. Flinching never a shade. With the shrapnel right in their face. Doing their Hyde Park stunt. Keeping their swing at an easy pace. Arms at the trail, eyes front. Man, it was great to see. Man, it was fine to do. It's a cot and a hospital ward for me. But I'll tell, am in Blighty, wherever I be. How the guards came through. Arthur Conan Doyle. The Passengers of a Retarded Submersible. November, 1916. The American People. What was it kept you so long, brave German submersible? We have been very anxious lest matters had not gone well. With you and the precious cargo of your country's drugs and dyes. But here you are at last, and the sight is good for our eyes. Glad to welcome you up and out of the caves of the sea. And ready for sale or barter, whatever your will may be. The captain of the submersible. Oh, do not be impatient, good friends of this neutral land. That we have been so tardy in reaching your eager strand. We were stopped by a curious chance just off the Irish coast. Where the mightiest wreck ever was lay crowded with a host. Of the dead that went down with her. And some prayed us to bring them. Here. That they might be at home with their brothers and sisters dear. 
We Germans have tender hearts, and it grieved us sore to say. We were not a passenger ship, and to most we must answer nay. But if from among their hundreds they could somehow a half-score choose. We thought we could manage to bring them. And we would not refuse. They chose, and the women and children that are greeting you here are. Those. Ghosts of the women and children that the rest of the hundred chose. The American people. What guff are you giving us, Captain? We are able to tell, we hope. A dozen ghosts, when we see them, apart from a periscope. Come, come, get down to business. For time is money, you know. And you must make up in both to us for having been so slow. Better tell this story of yours to the submarines, for we. No there was no such wreck, and none of your spookery. The ghosts of the Lusitania women and children. Oh, kind kin of our murderers, take us back when you sail away. Our own kin have forgotten us. Oh captain, do not stay. But hasten, captain, hasten, the wreck that lies under the sea. Shall be ever the home for us this land can never be. William Dean Howells. Edith Cavell. She was binding the wounds of her enemies when they came. The lint in her hand unrolled. They battered the door with their rifle butts, crashed it in. She faced them gentle and bold. They hailed her before the judges where they sat. In their places, helmet on head. With question and menace the judges assailed her, yes. I have broken your law, she said. I have tended the hurt and hidden the hunted, have done. As a sister does to a brother. Because of a law that is greater than that you have made. Because I could do none other. Deal as you will with me. This is my choice to the end. To live in the life I vowed. She is self-confessed, they cried, she is self-condemned. She shall die, that the rest may be cowed. In the terrible hour of the dawn, when the veins are cold. They led her forth to the wall. I have loved my land, she said, but it is not enough. Love requires of me all. I will empty my heart of the bitterness, hating none. And sweetness filled her brave. With a vision of understanding beyond the hour. That knelled to the waiting grave. They bound her eyes, but she stood as if she shone. The rifles it was that shook. When the horse command rang out. They could not endure. That last, that defenseless look. And the officer strode and pistoled her surely, ashamed. That men, seasoned in blood. Should quail at a woman, only a woman. As a flower stamped in the mud. And now that the deed was securely done, in the night. When none had known her fate. They answered those that had striven for her, day by day. It is over, you come too late. And with many words and sorrowful phrased excuse. Argued their German right. To kill, most legally, hard though the duty be. The law must assert its might. Only a woman. Yet she had pity on them. The victim offered slain. To the gods of fear that they worship. Leave them there. Red hands, to clutch their gain. She bewailed not herself, and we will bewail her not but with tears of pride rejoice. That an English soul was found so crystal clear. To be triumphant voice. Of the human heart that dares adventure all. But live to itself untrue. And beyond all laws sees love as the light in the night. As the star it must answer to. The hurts she healed, the thousands comforted, these. Make a fragrance of her fame but because she stepped to her star right on through death. It is victory speaks her name. Lawrence Binion. The Hellgate of Soissons. My name is Dorino, the poet. You have heard. We, oui, comedy Francaise. Perchance it has happened, mon ami, you know of my unworthy lays. Ah, then you must guess how my fingers are itching to talk to a pen. For I was at Soissons, and saw it, the death of the twelve Englishmen. My leg, malheureusement, I left it behind on the banks of the Aisne. Regret? 
I would pay with the other to witness their valor again. A trifle, indeed, I assure you, to give for the honor to tell. How that handful of British, undaunted, went into the gateway of hell. Let me draw you a plan of the battle. Here we French and your engineers. Stood. Over there a detachment of German sharpshooters lay hid in a wood. A Mitria's battery planted on top of this well-chosen ridge. Held the road for the Prussians and covered the direct approach to the bridge. It was madness to dare the dense murder that spewed from those ghastly machines. Only those who have danced to its music can know what the Mitria's means. But the bridge on the Aisne was a menace. Our safety demanded its fall. Engineers, volunteers. In a body, the royals stood out at the call. Death at best was the fate of that mission, to their glory not one was. Dismayed. A party was chosen, and seven survived till the powder was laid. And they died with their fuses unlighted. Another detachment. Again. A sortie is made, all too vainly. The bridge still commanded the aim. We were fighting two foes, time and Prussia, the moments were worth more. Then troops. We must blow up the bridge. A lone soldier darts out from the royals. And swoops. For the fuse. Fate seems with us. We cheer him, he answers, our hopes. Are reborn. A ball rips his visor, his khaki shows red where another has torn. Will he live, will he last, will he make it? Hellas. And so near to the. Goal. A second, he dies. Then a third one. A fourth. Still the Germans take. Toll. A fifth, magnifique. It is magic. How does he escape them? He may. Yes, he does. See, the match flares. A rifle rings out from the wood. And says, nay. Six, seven, eight, nine take their places, six, seven, eight, nine brave. Their hail. Six, seven, eight, nine, how we count them. But the sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth fail. A tenth. Saker nam. But these English are soldiers, they know how to. Try. He fumbles the place where his jaw was, they show, too, how heroes can. Die. Ten we count, ten who ventured unquailing, ten there were, and ten are. No more. Yet another salutes and superbly essays where the ten failed before. God of battles, look down and protect him. Lord, his heart is as thine. Let him live. But Demetria splutters and stutters, and riddles him into a sieve. Then I thought of my sins, and sat waiting the charge that we could not withstand. And I thought of my beautiful Paris, and gave a last look at the land. At France, my belle France, in her glory of blue sky and green field. And wood. Death with honor, but never surrender. And to die with such men, it was. Good. They are forming, the bugles are blaring, they will cross in a moment. And then. When out of the line of the royals, your island, Mon Ami, breeds men. Burst a private, a tawny-haired giant, it was hopeless, but, seal. How? He ran. Bond you please remember the pattern, and make many more on his plan. No cheers from our ranks, and the Germans, they halted in wonderment. Two. See, he reaches the bridge, ah. He lights it. I am dreaming, it cannot. Be true. Screams of rage. Fusillade. They have killed him. Too late though, the. Good work is done. By the valor of twelve English martyrs, the Hellgate of Soissons is. 1. Herbert Kaufman. The Virgin of Albert. Notre Dame de Brebeers. Shyly expectant, gazing up at her. They linger, 
Gaul and Britain, side by side. Death they know well, for daily have they died. Spending their boyhood ever bravelier. They wait, here is no priest or chorister. Birds skirt the stricken tower, terrified. Desolate, empty, is the Easter tide. Yet still they wait, watching the babe and her. Broken, the mother stoops, the brutish foe. Hurled with dull hate his bolts, and down she swayed. Down, till she saw the toiling swarms below. Platoons, guns, transports, endlessly arrayed. Women are woe for them. Let me be theirs. And comfort them, and hearken all their prayers. George Herbert Clark. Retreat. Broken, bewildered by the long retreat. Across the stifling leagues of southern plain. Across the scorching leagues of trampled grain. Half stunned, half blinded, by the trudge of feet. And dusty smother of the August heat. He dreamt of flowers in an English lane. Of hedgerow flowers glistening after rain. All heel and willow herb and meadowsweet. All heel and willow herb and meadowsweet. The innocent names kept up a cool refrain. All heel and willow herb and meadowsweet. Chiming and tinkling in his aching brain. Until he babbled like a child again. All heel and willow herb and meadowsweet. Wilfred Wilson Gibson. A letter from the front. I was out early today, spying about. From the top of a haystack, such a lovely morning. And when I mounted again to canter back. I saw across a field in the broad sunlight. A young gunner subaltern. Stalking along. With a rook rifle held at the ready, and, would you believe it? A domestic cat, soberly marching beside him. So I laughed, and felt quite well disposed to the youngster. And shouted out, the top of the morning, to him. And wished him, good sport. And then I remembered. My rank, and his, and what I ought to be doing. And I rode nearer, and added, I can only suppose. You have not seen the commander-in-chief's order. Forbidding English officers to annoy their allies. By hunting and shooting. But he stood and saluted. And said earnestly, I beg your pardon, sir. I was only going out to shoot a sparrow. To feed my cat with. So there was the whole picture. The lovely early morning, the occasional shell. Screeching and scattering past us, the empty landscape. Empty, except for the young gunner saluting. And the cat, anxiously watching his every movement. I may be wrong, and I may have told it badly. But it struck me as being extremely ludicrous. Henry Newbolt. Reims Cathedral, 1914. A winged death has smitten dumb thy bells. And poured them molten from thy tragic towers. Now are the windows dust that were thy flower. Patterned like frost, petaled like asphodels. Gone are the angels and the archangels. The saints, the little lamb above thy door. The shepherd Christ. They are not, any more. Save in the soul where exiled beauty dwells. But who has heard within thy vaulted gloom? That old divine insistence of the sea. When music flows along the sculptured stone. In tides of prayer, for him thy windows bloom. Like faithful sunset, warm immortally. Thy bells live on, and heaven is in their tone. Grace Hazard Conkling. 15. Poets Militant. I have a rendezvous with death. I have a rendezvous with death. At some disputed barricade. When spring comes back with rustling shade. And apple blossoms fill the air. I have a rendezvous with death. When spring brings back blue days and fair. It may be he shall take my hand. And lead me into his dark land. And close my eyes and quench my breath. It may be I shall pass him still. I have a rendezvous with death. On some scarred slope of battered hill. When spring comes round again this year. And the first meadow flowers appear. God knows, tea were better to be deep. Pillowed in silk and scented down. 
where love throbs out in blissful sleep. Pulse nigh to pulse, and breath to breath. Where hushed awakenings are dear. But I've a rendezvous with death. At midnight in some flaming town. When spring trips north again this year. And I to my pledged word am true. I shall not fail that rendezvous. Alan Seeger The Soldier If I should die, think only this of me. That there's some corner of a foreign field. That is for ever England. There shall be. In that rich earth a richer dust concealed. A dust whom England bore, shaped, made aware. Gave once her flowers to love, her ways to roam. A body of England's, breathing English air. Washed by the rivers, blessed by sons of home. And think this heart, all evil shed away. A pulse in the eternal mind, no less. Give somewhere back the thoughts by England given. Her sights and sounds, dreams happy as her day. And laughter, learnt of friends. And gentleness. In hearts at peace, under an English heaven. Rupert Brooke. Expectants expect Avi. From morn to midnight, all day through. I laugh and play as others do. I sin and chatter, just the same. As others with a different name. And all year long upon the stage. I dance and tumble and do rage. So vehemently, I scarcely see. The inner and eternal me. I have a temple I do not. Visit, a heart I have forgot. A self that I have never met. A secret shrine, and yet, and yet. This sanctuary of my soul. Unwitting I keep white and whole. Unlatched and lit, if thou shouldst care. To enter or to tarry there. With parted lips and outstretched hands. And listening ears thy servant stands. Call thou early, call thou late. To thy great service dedicate. Charles Hamilton Sorley May, 1915 The Volunteer Here lies a clerk who half his life had spent. Toiling at ledgers in a city grey. Thinking that so his days would drift away. With no lance broken in life's tournament. Yet ever, twixt the books and his bright eyes. The gleaming eagles of the legions came. And horsemen, charging under phantom skies. Went thundering past beneath the oriflam. And now those waiting dreams are satisfied. From twilight to the halls of dawn he went. His lance is broken, but he lies content. With that high hour, in which he lived and died. And falling thus he wants no recompense. Who found his battle in the last resort. Nor needs he any hearse to bear him hence. Who goes to join the men of Agincourt. Herbert Asquith. Into battle. The naked earth is warm with spring. And with green grass and bursting trees. Leans to the sun's gaze glorying. And quivers in the sunny breeze. And life is color and warmth and light. And a striving evermore for these. And he is dead who will not fight. And who dies fighting has increase. The fighting man shall from the sun. Take warmth, and life from the glowing earth. Speed with the light foot winds to run. And with the trees to newer birth. And find, when fighting shall be done. Great rest, and fullness after dearth. All the bright company of heaven. Hold him in their high comradeship. The dog star, and the sisters seven. Orion's belt and sword hip. The woodland trees that stand together. They stand to him each one a friend. They gently speak in the windy weather. They guide to valley and ridge's end. The kestrel hovering by day. And the little owls that call by night. Bid him be swift and keen as they. As keen of ear, as swift of sight. The blackbird sings to him, Brother, brother. If this be the last song you shall sing. Sing well, for you may not sing another. Brother, sing. In dreary, doubtful, waiting hours. Before the brazen frenzy starts. The horses show him nobler powers. 
O patient eyes, courageous hearts. And when the burning moment breaks. And all things else are out of mind. And only joy of battle takes. Him by the throat, and makes him blind. Through joy and blindness he shall know. Not caring much to know. That still. Nor lead nor steel shall reach him, so. That it be not the destined will. The thundering line of battle stands. And in the air death moans and sings. But day shall clasp him with strong hands. And night shall fold him in soft wings. Julian Grenfell Flanders, April, 1915 The Cricketers of Flanders The first to climb the parapet With cricket balls in either hand The first to vanish in the smoke Of godforsaken no man's land First at the wire and soonest through First at those red-mouthed hounds of hell The maxims and the first to fall They do their bit and do it well Full sixty yards I've seen them throw. With all that nicety of aim. They learned on British cricket fields. Ah, bombing is a Britain's game. Shell hole to shell hole, trench to trench. Lobbing them over, with an eye. As true as though it were a game. And friends were having tea close by. Pulled down some art offending thing. Of carven stone, and in its stead. Let splendid bronze commemorate. These men, the living and the dead. No figure of heroic size. Towering skyward like a god. But just a lad who might have stepped. From any British bombing squad. His shrapnel helmet set a tilt. His bombing waistcoat sagging low. His rifle slung across his back. Poised in the very act to throw. And let some graven legend tell. Of those weird battles in the West. Wherein he put old skill to use. And played old games with sterner zest. Thus should he stand, reminding those. In less believing days, perchance. How Britain's fighting cricketers. Helped bomb the Germans out of France. And other eyes than ours would see. And other hearts than ours would thrill. And others say, as we have said. A sportsman and a soldier still. James Norman Hall. All the hills and valleys along. All the hills and valleys along. Earth is bursting into song. And the singers are the chaps. Who are going to die perhaps. Oh sing, marching men. Till the valleys ring again. Give your gladness to earth's keeping. So be glad, when you are sleeping. Cast away regret and rue. Think what you are marching to. Little live, great pass. Jesus Christ and Barabbas. Were found the same day. This died, that went his way. So sing with joyful breath. For why, you are going to death. Teeming earth will surely store. All the gladness that you pour. Earth that never doubts nor fears. Earth that knows of death, not tears. Earth that bore with joyful ease. Hemlock for Socrates. Earth that blossomed and was glad. Neath the cross that Christ had. Shall rejoice and blossom too. When the bullet reaches you. Wherefore, men marching. On the road to death, sing. Pour your gladness on earth's head. So be merry, so be dead. From the hills and valleys earth. Shouts back the sound of mirth. Tramp of feet and lilt of song. Ringing all the road along. All the music of their going. Ringing, swinging, glad song throwing. Earth will echo still, when foot. Lies numb and voice mute. On, marching men, on. To the gates of death with song. Sow your gladness for earth's reaping. So you may be glad, though sleeping. Strew your gladness on earth's bed. So be merry, so be dead. Charles Hamilton Sorley. No man's land. No man's land is an eerie sight. At early dawn in the pale gray light. Never a house and never a hedge. 
in no man's land from edge to edge. And never a living soul walks there. To taste the fresh of the morning air. Only some lumps of rotting clay. That were friends or foe men yesterday. What are the bounds of no man's land? You can see them clearly on either hand. A mound of ragbags grey in the sun. Or a furrow of brown where the earthworks run. From the eastern hills to the western sea. Through field or forest o'er river and lea. No man may pass them, but aim you well. And death rides across on the bullet or shell. But no man's land is a goblin sight. When patrols crawl over at dead o night. Bosch or British, Belgian or French. You dice with death when you cross the trench. When the rapid, like fireflies in the dark. Flits down the parapet spark by spark. And you drop for cover to keep your head. With your face on the breast of the four months. Dead. The man who ranges in no man's land. Is dogged by the shadows on either hand. When the star shells flare, as it bursts overhead. Scares the grey rats that feed on the dead. And the bursting bomb or the bayonet snatch. May answer the click of your safety catch. For the lone patrol, with his life in his hand. Is hunting for blood in no man's land. James H. Knight Adkin. Champagne, 1914-15. In the glad revels, in the happy fates. When cheeks are flushed, and glasses gilt and pearled. With the sweet wine of France that concentrates. The sunshine and the beauty of the world. Drink sometimes. You whose footsteps yet may tread. The undisturbed, delightful paths of earth. To those whose blood, in pious duty shed. Hallows the soil where that same wine had birth. Here, by devoted comrades laid away. Along our lines they slumber where they fell. Beside the crater at the firm d'Alger. And up the bloody slopes of La Pompelle. And round the city whose cathedral towers. The enemies of beauty dared profane. And in the mat of multicolored flowers. That clothed the sunny chalk fields of Champagne. Under the little crosses where they rise. The soldier rests. Now round him undismayed. The cannon thunders, and at night he lies. At peace beneath the eternal fusillade. That other generations might possess. From shame and menace free in years to come. A richer heritage of happiness. He marched to that heroic martyrdom. Esteeming less the forfeit that he paid. Then undishonored that his flag might float. Over the towers of liberty, he made. His breast the bulwark and his blood the moat. Obscurely sacrificed, his nameless tomb. Bare of the sculptor's art, the poet's lines. Summer shall flush with poppy fields in bloom. And autumn yellow with maturing vines. There the grape pickers at their harvesting. Shall lightly tread and load their wicker trays. Blessing his memory as they toil and sing. In the slant sunshine of October days. I love to think that if my blood should be. So privileged to sink where his has sunk. I shall not pass from earth entirely. But when the banquet rings, when healths are drunk. And faces that the joys of living fill. Glow radiant with laughter and good cheer. In beaming cups some spark of me shall still. Brim toward the lips that once I held so dear. So shall one coveting no higher plane. Than nature clothes in color and flesh and tone. Even from the grave put upward to attain. The dreams youth cherished and missed and might have known. And that strong need that strove unsatisfied. Toward earthly beauty in all forms it wore. Not death itself shall utterly divide. From the beloved shapes it thirsted for. Alas, how many an adept for whose arms. Life held delicious offerings perished here. How many in the prime of all that charms. Crowned with all gifts that conquer and endear. Honor them not so much with tears and flowers. But you with whom the sweet fulfillment lies. Where in the anguish of atrocious hours. 
turned their last thoughts and closed their dying eyes. Rather when music on bright gatherings lays. Its tender spell, and joy is uppermost. Be mindful of the men they were, and raise. Your glasses to them in one silent toast. Drink to them, amorous of dear earth as well. They ask no tribute lovelier than this. And in the wine that ripened where they fell. Oh, frame your lips as though it were a kiss. Alan Seeger Champagne, France, July, 1915. Headquarters. A league and a league from the trenches, from the traversed maze of the lines, where daylong the sniper watches and daylong the bullet whines, and the cratered earth is in travail with mines and with countermines, here. Where haply some woman dreamed, are those her roses that bloom in the garden beyond the windows of my littered working room. We have decked the map for our masters as a bride is decked for the groom. Fair, on each lettered numbered square, crossroad. And mound and wire. Loophole, redoubt, and emplacement, lie the targets. Their mouths desire. Gay with purples and browns and blues, have we. Traced them their arcs of fire. And ever the type keys chatter. And ever our keen. Wires bring. Word from the watchers a crouch below, word from. The watchers a wing. And ever we hear the distant growl of our hid guns. Thundering. Hear it hardly, and turn again to our maps, where the. Trench lines crawl. Red on the gray and each with a sign for the ranging. Shrapnels fall. Snakes that our masters shall scotch at dawn, as is. Written here on the wall. For the weeks of our waiting draw to a close. There is scarcely a leaf astir. In the garden beyond my windows, where the twilight. Shadows blur. The blaze of some woman's roses. Bombardment. Orders, sir. Gilbert Franco. Home thoughts from Lavendy. Green gardens in Lavendy. Soldiers only know the street. Where the mud is churned and splashed about. By battle-wending feet. And yet beside one stricken house there is a glimpse of grass. Look for it when you pass. Beyond the church whose pitted spire. Seems balanced on a strand. Of swaying stone and tottering brick. Two roofless ruins stand. And here, among the wreckage, where the back wall should have been. We found a garden green. The grass was never trodden on. The little path of gravel. Was overgrown with celandine. No other folk did travel. Along its weedy surface but the nimble-footed mouse. Running from house to house. So all along the tender blades of soft and vivid grass we lay, nor heard the limber wheels that pass and ever pass in noisy continuity until their stony rattle seems in itself a battle. At length we rose up from this ease of tranquil happy mind and searched the garden's little length some new pleasance to find. And there's some yellow daffodils, and jasmine hanging high. Did rest the tired eye. The fairest and most fragrant. Of the many sweets we found. Was a little bush of daphne flower. Upon a mossy mound. And so thick were the blossoms set and so divine the scent. That we were well content. Hungry for spring I bent my head. The perfume fanned my face. And all my soul was dancing. In that lovely little place. Dancing with a measured step from wrecked and shattered towns. Away, upon the downs. I saw green banks of daffodil. Slim poplars in the breeze. Great tan brown hairs in gusty march. According on the lees. And meadows, with their glittering streams, and silver scurrying days. Home, what a perfect place. E. Wyndham Tennant. A petition. All that a man might ask thou hast given me, England. Birthright and happy childhood's long heart sees. And love whose range is deep beyond all sounding. And wider than all seas. A heart to front the world and find God in it. 
Eyes blind and now but not too blind to see. The lovely things behind the dross and darkness. And lovelier things to be. And friends whose loyalty time nor death shall weaken. And quenchless hope and laughter's golden store. All that a man might ask thou hast given me, England. Yet grant thou one thing more. That now when envious foes would spoil thy splendor. Unversed in arms, a dreamer such, as I. May in thy ranks be deemed not all unworthy. England, for thee to die. Robert Ernest for need. Fulfillment. Was there love once? I have forgotten her. Was there grief once? Grief yet is mine. Other loves I have, men rough, but men who stir. More grief, more joy, than love of thee and thine. Faces cheerful, full of whimsical mirth. Lined by the wind, burned by the sun. Bodies enraptured by the abounding earth. As whose children we are brethren, one. And any moment may descend hot death. To shatter limbs. Pulp, tear, blast. Beloved soldiers who love rough life and breath. Not less for dying faithful to the last. Oh the fading eyes, the grimed face turned bony. Op-ed mouth gushing, fallen head. Lessening pressure of a hand, shrunk, clammed and stony. Oh sudden spasm, release of the dead. Was there love once? I have forgotten her. Was there grief once? Grief yet is mine. Oh loved, living, dying, heroic soldier. All, all my joy, my grief, my love, are thine. Robert Nichols The day's march. The battery grides and jingles. Mile succeeds to mile. Shaking the noonday sunshine. The guns lunge out a while. And then are still a while. We amble along the highway. The reeking, powdery dust. Ascends and cakes our faces. With a striped, sweaty crust. Under the still sky's violet. The heat throbs on the air. The white road's dusty radiance. Assumes a dark glare. With a head hot and heavy. And eyes that cannot rest. And a black heart burning. In a stifled breast. I sit in the saddle. I feel the road unroll. And keep my senses straightened. Toward tomorrow's goal. There, over unknown meadows. Which we must reach at last. Day and night thunders. A black and chilly blast. Heads forget heaviness. Hearts forget spleen. For by that mighty winnowing. Being is blown clean. Light in the eyes again. Strength in the hand. A spirit dares, dies, forgives. And can understand. And, best. Love comes back again. After grief and shame. And along the wind of death. Throws a clean flame. The battery grides and jingles. Mile succeeds to mile. Suddenly battering the silence. The guns burst out a while. I lift my head and smile. Robert Nichols. The sign. We are here in a wood of little beaches. And the leaves are like black lace. Against a sky of nacre. One bow of clear promise. Across the moon. It is in this wise that God speaketh unto me. He layeth hands of healing upon my flesh. Stilling it in an eternal peace. Until my soul reaches out myriad and infinite hands. Toward him. And is eased of its hunger. And I know that this passes. This implacable fury and torment of men. As a thing insensate and vain. And the stillness hath said unto me. Over the tumult of sounds and shaken flame. Out of the terrible beauty of wrath. I alone am eternal. One bow of clear promise. Across the moon. Frederick Manning. The Trenches. Endless lanes sunken in the clay. Bays, and traverses, fringed with wasted herbage. 
seed pods of blue scabious, and some lingering blooms. And the sky, seen as from a well. Brilliant with frosty stars. We stumble, cursing, on the slippery duckboards. Goaded like the damned by some invisible wrath. A will stronger than weariness, stronger than animal fear. Implacable and monotonous. Here a shaft, slanting, and below. A dusty and flickering light from one feeble candle. And prone figures sleeping uneasily. Murmuring. And men who cannot sleep. With faces impassive as masks. Bright, feverish eyes, and drawn lips. Sad, pitiless. Terrible faces. Each an incarnate curse. Here in a bay, a helmeted sentry. Silent and motionless, watching while two sleep. And he sees before him. With indifferent eyes the blasted and torn land. Peopled with stiff prone forms, stupidly rigid. As though, they had not been men. Dead are the lips where love laughed or sang. The hands of youth eager to lay hold of life. Eyes that have laughed to eyes. And these were begotten. O oh, love, and lived lightly, and burnt. With the lust of a man's first strength, ere they were rent. Almost at unawares, savagely, and strewn. In bloody fragments, to be the carrion. Of rats and crows. And the sentry moves not, searching. Night for menace with weary eyes. Frederick Manning. Sonnets. I. I see across the chasm of flying years. The pyre of Dido on the vacant shore. I see Medea's fury and hear the roar. Of rushing flames, the new bride's burning tears. And ever as still another vision peers. Through memory's mist disturb me more and more. I say that surely I have lived before. And known this joy and trembled with these fears. The passion that they show me burns so high. Their love, in me who have not looked on love. So fiercely flames, so wildly comes the cry. Of stricken women the warriors call above. That I would gladly lay me down and die. To wake again where Helen and Hector move. 2. The falling rain is music overhead. The dark night, lit by no intruding star. Fit covering yields to thoughts that roam afar. And turn again familiar paths to tread. Where many a laden hour too quickly sped. In happier times. Before the dawn of war. Before the spoiler had wet his sword to mar. The faithful living and the mighty dead. It is not that my soul is weighed with woe but rather wonder, seeing they do but sleep. As birds that in the sinking summer sweep. Across the heaven to happier climes to go. So they are gone. And sometimes we must weep. And sometimes, smiling, murmur, be it so. Henry William Hutchinson The Messines Road I. The road that runs up to Messines. Is double locked with gates of fire barred with high ramparts, and between the unbridged river, and the wire. None ever goes up to Messines. For death lurks all about the town. Death holds the veil as his domain. And only death moves up and down. 2. Choked with wild weeds, and overgrown. With rank grass, all torn and rent. By war's opposing engines, strewn with debris from each day's event. And in the dark the broken trees, whose arching boughs were once its shade, grim and distorted, ghostly ease, in groans their souls vexed and afraid. Yet here the farmer drove his cart. Here friendly folk would meet and pass. Here bore the good wife eggs to mart. And old and young walked up to mass. Here schoolboys lingered in the way. Here the bent packman labored by. And lovers at the end, oh, the day. Whispered their secret blushingly. A goodly road for simple needs. An avenue to praise and paint. Kept by fair use from wreck and weeds. Blessed by the shrine of its own saint. 3. 
the road that runs up to Messines. Ah, how we guard it day and night. And how they guard it, who o'erween. A stricken people, with their might. But we shall go up to Messines. Even through that fire defended gate. Over and through all else between. And give the highway back its state. J. E. Stewart. The challenge of the guns. By day, by night, along the lines their dull boom rings. And that reverberating roar its challenge flings. Not only unto thee across the narrow sea. But from the loneliest vale in the last land's heart. The sad-eyed watching mother sees her sons depart. And freighted full the tumbling waters of ocean are. With aid for England from England's sons afar. The glass is dim, we see not wisely, far, nor well. But bred of English bone, and reared on freedom's wine. All that we have and are we lay on England's shrine. A. N. Field. The beach road by the wood. I know a beach road. A road where I would go. It runs up northward. From Kuden Bay to Ho. And there, in the high woods. Daffodils grow. And whoever walks along there. Stops short and sees. By the moist tree roots. In a clearing of the trees. Yellow great battalions of them. Blowing in the breeze. While the spring sun brightens. And the dull sky clears. They blow their golden trumpets. Those golden trumpeteers. They blow their golden trumpets. And they shake their glancing spears. And all the rocking beech trees. Are bright with buds again. And the green and open spaces. Are greener after rain. And far to southward one can hear. The sullen, moaning rain. Once before I die. I will leave the town behind. The loud town, the dark town. That cramps and chills the mind. And I'll stand again bareheaded there. In the sunlight and the wind. Yes, I shall stand. Where as a boy I stood. Above the dikes and levels. In the beach road by the wood. And I'll smell again the sea breeze. Salt and harsh and good. And there shall rise to me. From that consecrated ground. The old dreams, the lost dreams. That years and cares have drowned. Welling up within me. And above me and around. The song that I could never sing. And the face I never found. Geoffrey Howard. German prisoners. When first I saw you in the curious street. Like some platoon of soldier ghosts in grey. My mad impulse was all to smite and slay. To spit upon you, tread you beneath my feet. But when I saw how each sad soul did greet. My gaze with no sign of defiant frown. How from tired eyes looked spirits broken down. How each face showed the pale flag of defeat. And doubt, despair, and disillusionment. And how were grievous wounds on many a head. And on your garb red-faced was other red. And how you stooped as men whose strength was spent. I knew that we had suffered each as other. And could have grasped your hand and cried, my brother. Joseph Lee. But a short time to live. Our little hour, how swift it flies. When poppies flare and lilies smile. How soon the fleeting minute dies. Leaving us but a little while. To dream our dream, to sing our song. To pick the fruit, to pluck the flower. The gods, they do not give us long. One little hour. Our little hour, how short it is. When love with dew-eyed loveliness. Raises her lips for ours to kiss. And dies within our first caress. Youth flickers out like wind-blown flame. Sweets of today tomorrow sour. For time and death, relentless, claim. Our little hour. Our little hour, how short a tune. To wage our wars, to fan our hates. To take our fill of armored crime. To troop our banners, storm the gates. Blood on the sword, our eyes blood red. 
Blind in our puny reign of power. Do we forget how soon is sped? Our little hour. Our little hour, how soon it dies. How short a time to tell our beads. To chant our feeble litanies. To think sweet thoughts, to do good deeds. The altar lights grow pale and dim. The bells hang silent in the tower. So passes with the dying him. Our little hour. Leslie Coulson. Before action. By all the glories of the day. And the cool evening's benison. By the last sunset touch that lay. Upon the hills when day was done. By beauty lavishly outpoured. And blessings carelessly received. By all the days that I have lived. Make me a soldier, Lord. By all of all men's hopes and fears. And all the wonders poets sing. The laughter of unclouded years. And every sad and lovely thing. By the romantic ages stored. With high endeavor that was his. By all his mad catastrophes. Make me a man, O Lord. I, that on my familiar hill. Saw with uncomprehending eyes. A hundred of thy sunsets spill. Their fresh and sanguine sacrifice. Ere the sun swings his noonday sword. Must say goodbye to all of this. By all delights that I shall miss. Help me to die. O Lord. W. N. Hodgson, Edward Melbourne. Courage. Alone amid the battle din untouched. Stands out one figure beautiful, serene. No grime of smoke nor reeking blood hath smutched. The virgin brow of this unconquered queen. She is the joy of courage vanquishing. The unstilled tremors of the fearful heart. And it is she that bids the poet sing. And gives to each the strength to bear his part. Her eye shall not be dimmed, but as a flame. Shall light the distant ages with its fire. That men may know the glory of her name. That purified our souls of fear's desire. And she doth calm our sorrow, soothe our pain. And she shall lead us back to peace again. Dinely hussy. Optimism. At last there'll dawn the last of the long year. Of the long year that seemed to dream no end. Whose every dawn but turned the world more drear. And slew some hope, or led away some friend. Or be you dark, or buffeting, or blind. We care not, day, but leave not death behind. The hours that feed on war go heavy hearted. Death is no fair wherewith to make hearts fain. Oh, we are sick to find that they who started. With glamour in their eyes came not again. O oh day, be long and heavy if you will. But on our hopes set not a bitter heel. For tiny hopes like tiny flowers of spring. Will come, though death and ruin hold the land. Though storms may roar they may not break the wing. Of the earthed lark whose song is ever bland. Fell year unpitiful, slow days of scorn. Your kind shall die, and sweeter days be born. A. Victor Ratcliffe. The battlefield. Around no fire the soldiers sleep tonight. But lie a wearied on the ice-bound field. With cloaks wrapped round their sleeping forms, to shield. Them from the northern winds. Ere comes the light. Of morn brave men must arm, stern foes to fight. The sentry stands, his limbs with cold congealed. His head a nod with sleep, he cannot yield. Though sleep and snow in deadly force unite. Amongst the sleepers lies the boy awake. And wide-eyed plans brave glories that transcend. The deeds of heroes dead. Then dreams overtake. His tired-out brain, and lofty fancies blend. To one grand theme, and through all barriers break. To guard from hurt his faithful sleeping friend. Sidney Oswald. On less aura. Soldat Jacques Bonhomme Loquiter. See you that stretch of shell-torn mud spotted with. Pools of mire. Crossed by a burst abandoned trench and tortured. Strands of wire. Where splintered pickets reel and sag and leprous. 
trench rats play. That scour the devil's hunting ground to seek there. Carry and pray. That is the field my father loved, the field that once was mine. The land I nursed for my child's child as my father's. Did long sign. See there a mound of powdered stones, all flattened. Smashed, and torn. Gone black with damp and green with slime. Air. You and I were born. My father's father built a house, a little house and. Bare. And there I brought my woman home, that heap of. Rubble there. The soil of France. Fat fields and green that bred my. Blood and bone. Each wound that scars my bosom's pride burns deeper. Than my own. But yet there is one thing to say, one thing that pays for all, whatever lot our bodies know, whatever fate befall, we hold the line. We hold it still. My fields are no man's land, but the good God is debonair and holds us by the hand. On less aura. See there. And there I soaked heaps of huddled, grey. My fields shall laugh, enriched by those who sought them for a prey. James H. Knight Adkin. To an old lady seen at a guesthouse for soldiers. Quiet thou didst stand at thine appointed place. There was no press to purchase, younger grace. Attracts the youth of valor. Thou didst not know. Like the old, kindly Martha, to and fro. To haste. Yet one could say, in thine eye prize. The strength of calm that held in Mary's eyes. And when they came, thy gracious smile so wrought. They knew that they were given, not that they bought. Thou didst not tempt to vauntings, and pretense. Was dumb before thy perfect woman's sense. Blessed who have seen, for they shall ever see. The radiance of thy benignity. Alexander Robertson. The casualty clearing station. A bowl of daffodils. A crimson quilted bed. Sheets and pillows white as snow. White and gold and red. And sisters moving to and fro. With soft and silent tread. So all my spirit fills. With pleasure infinite. And all the feathered wings of rest. Seem flocking from the radiant west. To bear me through the night. See, how they close me in. They, and the sisters' arms. One eye is closed, the other lid. Is watching how my spirit slid. Toward some red-roofed farms. And having crept beneath them slept. Secure from war's alarms. Gilbert Waterhouse. Hills of home. Oh. Yon hills are filled with sunlight, and the green. Leaves pale to gold. And the smoking mists of autumn hanging faintly. O'er the wold. I dream of hills of other days whose sides I loved to. Rome. When spring was dancing through the lanes of those. Distant hills of home. The winds of heaven gathered there as pure and cold. As dew. Wood sorrel and wild violets along the hedgerows. Grew. The blossom on the pear trees was as white as flakes. Of foam. In the orchard neath the shadow of those distant. Hills of home. The first white frost in the meadow will be shining. There today. And the furrowed upland glinting warm beside the. Woodland way. There, a bright face and a clear hearth will be waiting. When I come. And my heart is throbbing wildly for those distant. Hills of home. Malcolm Hemphrey. 16. Auxiliaries. The Red Cross Spirit Speaks. Wherever war, with its red woes. Or flood, or fire, or famine goes. There, too, go I. If earth in any quarter quakes. Or pestilence its ravage makes. Thither I fly. I kneel behind the soldier's trench. I walk mid shambles smear and stench. The dead I mourn. I bear the stretcher and I bend. O'er Fritz and Pierre and Jack to mend. What shells have torn. I go wherever men may dare. 
I go wherever woman's care and love can live, wherever strength and skill can bring surcease to human suffering or solace give. I helped upon Haldora's shore with hospitaler knights I bore the first red cross. I was the lady of the lamp. I saw in Solferino's camp the crimson loss. I am your pennies and your pounds. I am your bodies on their rounds. Of pain afar. I am you, doing what you would. If you were only where you could. Your avatar. The cross which on my arm I wear. The flag which o'er my breast I bear. Is but the sign. Of what you'd sacrifice for him. Who suffers on the hellish rim. Of war's red line. John Finley. Chaplain to the forces. I have once more to remark upon the devotion to duty, courage, and contempt of danger which has characterized the work of the chaplains of the army throughout this campaign. Sir John French, in the Neuve Chapelle dispatch. Ambassador of Christ you go. Up to the very gates of hell. Through fog of powder, storm of shell. To speak your master's message, lo. The Prince of Peace is with you still. His peace be with you, his goodwill. It is not small, your priesthood's price. To be a man and yet stand by. To hold your life while others die. To bless, not share the sacrifice. To watch the strife and take no part. You with the fire at your heart. But yours, for our great Captain Christ. To know the sweat of agony. The darkness of Gethsemane. In anguish for these souls unpriced. Vicegerent of God's pity you. A sword must pierce your own soul through. In the pale gleam of newborn day. Apart in some tree-shadowed place. Your altar but a packing case. Rude as the shed where Mary lay. Your sanctuary the rain-drenched sod. You bring the kneeling soldier God. As sentinel you guard the gate. Twixt life and death, and unto death. Speed the brave soul whose failing breath. Shudders not at the grip of fate. But answers, gallant to the end. Christ is the word, and I his friend. Then God go with you, priest of God. For all is well and shall be well. What though you tread the roads of hell. Your captain these same ways has trod. Above the anguish and the loss. Still floats the ensign of his cross. Winifred M. Let's. Song of the Red Cross. O gracious ones, we bless your name. Upon our bended knee. The voice of love with tongue of flame. Records your charity. Your hearts, your lives right willingly ye gave. That sacred Ruth might shine. Ye fell, bright spirits, brave amongst the brave. Compassionate, divine. Example from your lustrous deeds. The conqueror shall take. Sowing sublime and fruitful seeds. Of Edo's in this ache. And when our griefs have passed on gloomy wing. When friend and foe are sped. Sons of a morning to be born shall sing. The radiant cross of red. Sons of a morning to be born shall sing. The radiant cross of red. Eden Philpots. The healers. In a vision of the night I saw them. In the battles of the night. Mid the roar and the reeling shadows of blood. They were moving like light. Light of the reason, guarded. Tense within the will. As a lantern under a tossing of boughs. Burn steady and still. With scrutiny calm, and with fingers. Patient as swift. They bind up the hurts and the pain rhythm. Bodies uplift. Untired and defenseless, around them. With shrieks in its breath. Bursts stark from the terrible horizon. Impersonal death. But they take not their courage from anger. That blinds the hot being. They take not their pity from weakness. Tender, yet seeing. Feeling, yet nerved to the uttermost. Keen, like steel. 
yet the wounds of the mind they are stricken with. Who shall heal? They endure to have eyes of the watcher. In hell, and not swerve. For an hour from the faith that they follow. The light that they serve. Man true to man, to his kindness. That overflows all. To his spirit erect in the thunder. When all his forts fall. This light, in the tiger mad welter. They serve and they save. What song shall be worthy to sing of them? Braver than the brave. Lawrence Binion. The Red Cross nurses. Out where the line of battle cleaves. The horizon of woe. And sightless warriors clutch the leaves. The Red Cross nurses go. In where the cots of agony. Mark death's unmeasured tide. Bear up the battle's harvestry. The Red Cross nurses glide. Look. Where the hell of steel has torn. Its way through slumbering earth. The orphaned urchins kneel forlorn. And wonder at their birth. Until, above them, calm and wise. With smile and guiding hand. God looking through their gentle eyes. The Red Cross nurses stand. Thomas L. Masson. 17. Keeping the Seas. Kilmany. A Song of the Trawlers. Dark, dark lay the drifters, against the Red West. As they shot their long meshes of steel overside. And the oily green waters were rocking to rest. When Kilmany went out, at the turn of the tide. And nobody knew where that lassie would roam. For the magic that called her was tapping unseen. It was well nigh a week ere Kilmany came home. And nobody knew where Kilmany had been. She'd a gun at her bow that was Newcastle's best. And a gun at her stern that was fresh from the Clyde. And a secret her skipper had never confessed. Not even at dawn, to his newly wed bride. And a wireless that whispered above like a gnome. The laughter of London, the boasts of Berlin. Oh, it may have been mermaids that lured her from home. But nobody knew where Kilmany had been. It was dark when Kilmany came home from her quest. With her bridge dabbled red where her skipper had died. But she moved like a bride with a rose at her breast. And, well done, Kilmany, the admiral cried. Now at sixty-four fathom a conger may come. And knows at the bones of a drowned submarine. But late in the evening Kilmany came home. And nobody knew where Kilmany had been. There's a wandering shadow that stares at the foam. Though they sing all the night to Old England, their queen. Late, late in the evening Kilmany came home. And nobody knew where Kilmany had been. Alfred Noyes. The Minesweepers. Dawn off the foreland, the young flood making. Jumbled and short and steep. Black in the hollows and bright where it's breaking. Awkward water to sweep. Mines reported in the fairway. Warn all traffic and detain. Sent up Unity, Clarabel, Assyrian, Stormcock, and Golden. Gain. Noon off the foreland, the first ebb making. Lumpy and strong in the bite. Boom after boom, and the golf hut shaking. And the jackdaws wild with fright. Mines located in the fairway. Boats now working up the chain. Sweepers, Unity, Clarabel, Assyrian, Stormcock, and Golden. Gain. Dusk off the foreland, the last light going. And the traffic crowding through. And five damned trawlers with their serenes blowing. Heading the whole review. Sweep completed in the fairway. No more mines remain. Sent back Unity, Clarabel, Assyrian, Stormcock, and Golden. Gain. Rudyard Kipling underscore. Mare Liberum. You dare to say with perjured lips. We fight to make the ocean free. You, whose black trail of butchered ships. Bestrews the bed of every sea. Where German submarines have wrought. Their horrors. Have you never thought. What you call freedom, men call piracy. Unnumbered ghosts that haunt the wave. Where you have murdered, 
cry you down. And seamen whom you would not save. We've now in weed grown depths a crown. Of shame for your imperious head. A dark memorial of the dead. Women and children whom you left to drown. Nay, not till thieves are set to guard. The gold, and corsairs called to keep. O'er peaceful commerce watch and ward. And wolves to herd the helpless sheep. Shall men and women look to thee. Thou ruthless old man of the sea. To safeguard law and freedom on the deep. In nobler breeds we put our trust. The nations in whose sacred lore. The ought stands out above the must. And honor rules in peace and war. With these we hold in soul and heart. With these we choose our lot and part. Till liberty is safe on sea and shore. Henry Van Dyke February 11, 1917 The Dawn Patrol Sometimes I fly at dawn above the sea. Where, underneath, the restless waters flow. Silver, and cold, and slow. Dim in the east there burns a newborn sun. Whose rosy gleams along the ripples run. Save where the mist droops low. Hiding the level loneliness from me. And now appears beneath the milk-white haze. A little fleet of anchored ships, which lie. In clustered company. And seem as they are yet fast bound by sleep. Although the day has long begun to peep. With red inflamed eye. Along the still. Deserted ocean ways. The fresh, cold wind of dawn blows on my face. As in the sun's raw heart I swiftly fly. And watch the seas glide by. Scarce human seem I, moving through the skies. And far removed from warlike enterprise. Like some great gull on high. Whose white and gleaming wings beat on through space. Then do I feel with God quite, quite alone. High in the virgin morn, so white and still. And free from human ill. My prayers transcend my feeble earthbound plaints. As though I sang among the happy saints. With many a holy thrill. As though the glowing sun were God's bright throne. My flight is done. I cross the line of foam. That breaks around a town of grey and red. Whose streets and squares lie dead. Beneath the silent dawn, then am I proud. That England's peace to guard I am allowed. Then bow my humble head. In thanks to him who brings me safely home. Paul Buescher Destroyers off Jutland If lost hounds could speak when they cast up next day after an unchecked night among the wild life of the dark they would talk much as our destroyers do. Rudyard Kipling They had hot scent across the spumy sea. Gehenna and her sister, Swift Shaitan. That in the pack, with goblin, Eblis ran. And many a couple more, full cry, foot free. The dog fox and his brood were fain to flee. But bare of fong and dangerous to the van. That pressed them close. So when the kill began. Some hounds were lamed and some died splendidly. But from the dusk along the skage rack. Until dawn loomed upon the reef of horn. And the last fox had slunk back to his earth. They kept the great traditions of the pack. Staunch-hearted through the hunt, as they were born. These hounds that England suckled at the birth. Reginald Mackintosh Cleveland. British Merchant Service. Oh, down by Millwall Basin as I went the other day. I met a skipper that I knew, and to him I did say. Now what's the cargo, Captain, that brings you up this way? Oh, I've been up and down, said he, and roundabout also. From Sydney to the Skage Rack, and Keel to Kalau. With a leaking steam pipe all the way to Californio. With pots and pans and ivory fans and every kind of thing. Rails and nails and cotton bales, and sewer pipes and string. But now I'm through with cargoes, and I'm here to serve the king. And if it's sweeping mines, to which my fancy somewhat leans. Or hanging out with booby traps for the skulking submarines. I'm here to do my blooming best and give the beggars beans. 
A rough job and a tough job is the best job for me. And what or where I don't much care, I'll take what it may be. For a tight place is the right place when it's foul weather at sea. There's not a port he doesn't know from Melbourne to New York. He's as hard as a lump of harness beef, and as salt as pickled pork. And he'll stand by a wreck in a murdering gale and count it part of his. Work. He's the terror of the FOCS law when he heals its various ills. With turpentine and mustard leaves, and poultices and pills. But he knows the sea like the palm of his hand, as a shepherd knows the hills. He'll spin you yarns from dawn to dark, and half of them are true. He swears in a score of languages, and maybe talks in two. And, he'll lower a boat in a hurricane to save a drowning crew. A rough job or a tough job, he's handled two or three. And what or where he won't much care, nor ask what the risk may be. For a tight place is the right place when it's wild weather at sea. C. Fox Smith. 18. The Wounded. To a soldier in hospital. Courage came to you with your boyhood's grace. Of ardent life and limb. Each day new dangers steeled you to the test. To ride, to climb, to swim. Your hot blood taught you carelessness of death. With every breath. So when you went to play another game. You could not but be brave. An empire's team, a rougher football field. The end, perhaps your grave. What matter? On the winning of a goal. You staked your soul. Yes, you wore courage as you wore your youth with carelessness and joy. But in what Spartan school of discipline? Did you get patience, boy? How did you learn to bear this long-drawn pain? And not complain? Restless with throbbing hopes, with thwarted aims. Impulsive as a colt. How do you lie here month by weary month? Helpless, and not revolt? What joy can these monotonous days afford? Here in a ward. Yet you are merry as the birds in spring. Or feign the gaiety. Lest those who dress and tend your wound each day. Should guess the agony. Lest they should suffer, this the only fear. You let draw near. Greybeard philosophy has sought in books. And argument this truth. That man is greater than his pain, but you. Have learnt it in your youth. You know the wisdom taught by Calvary. At twenty-three. Death would have found you brave, but braver still. You face each lagging day. A merry stoic, patient, chivalrous. Divinely kind and gay. You bear your knowledge lightly, graduate. Of unkind fate. Careless philosopher, the first to laugh. The latest to complain. Unmindful that you teach, you taught me this. In your long fight with pain. Since God made man so good, here stands my creed. God's good indeed. Winifred M. Let's. Between the lines. When consciousness came back, he found he lay. Between the opposing fires, but could not tell. On which hand were his friends. And either way. For him to turn was chancy, bullet and shell. Whistling and shrieking over him, as the glare. Of searchlights scoured the darkness to blind day. He scrambled to his hands and knees a scare. Dragging his wounded foot through puddled clay. And tumbled in a hole a shell had scooped. At random in a turnip field between. The unseen trenches where the foes lay cooped. Through that unending battle of unseen. Deadlocked, league-stretching armies. And quite spent. He rolled upon his back within the pit. And lay secure, thinking of all it meant. His lying in that little hole, sore hit. But living, while across the starry sky. Shrapnel and shell went screeching overhead. Of all it meant that he. Tom Dodd, should lie. Among the Belgian turnips, while his bed. If it were he, indeed, who'd climbed each night. Faggied with the day's work up the narrow stair. And slipped his clothes off in the candlelight. 
too tired to fold them neatly in a chair. The way his mother taught him, too dog tired. After the long days serving in the shop, inquiring what each customer required, politely talking whether, fit to drop. And now for fourteen days and nights, at least, he hadn't had his clothes off, and had lain in muddy trenches, napping like a beast, with one eye open, under sun and rain, and that unceasing hellfire. It was strange. How things turned out, the chances. You just got. To take your luck in life, you couldn't change. Your luck. And so here he was lying shot. Who just six months ago had thought to spend. His days behind a counter. Still, perhaps. And now, God only knew how he would end. He'd like to know how many of the chaps. Had won back to the trench alive, when he. Had fallen wounded and been left for dead. If any. This was different, certainly. From selling knots of tape and reels of thread. And knots of tape and reels of thread and knots. Of tape and reels of thread and knots of tape. Day in, day out. And answering, have you got, s. And, do you keep, s till there seemed no escape. From everlasting serving in a shop. Inquiring what each customer required. Politely talking whether, fit to drop. With swollen ankles, tired. But he was tired. Now. Every bone was aching, and had ached. For fourteen days and nights in that wet trench. Just duller when he slept than when he waked. Crouching for shelter from the steady drench. Of shell and shrapnel. That old trench, it seemed. Almost like home to him. He'd slept and fed. And sung and smoked in it, while shrapnel screamed. And shells went whining harmless overhead. Harmless, at least, as far as he. But Dick. Dick hadn't found them harmless yesterday. At breakfast, when he'd said he couldn't stick. Eating dry bread, and crawled out the back way. And brought them butter in a lordly dish. Butter enough for all. And held it high. Yellow and fresh and clean as you would wish. When plump upon the plate from out the sky. A shell fell bursting. Where the butter went. God only knew. And Dick. He dared not think. Of what had come to Dick. Or what it meant. The shrieking and the whistling and the stink. He'd lived in fourteen days and nights. T was luck. That he still lived. And queer how little then. He seemed to care that Dick. Perhaps T was pluck. That hardened him, a man among the men. Perhaps. Yet, only think things out a bit. And he was rabbit-livered, blue with funk. And he'd liked Dick, and yet when Dick was hit. He hadn't turned a hair. The meanest skunk. He should have thought would feel it when his mate. Was blown to smithereens, Dick, proud as punch. Grinning like sin, and holding up the plate. But he had gone on munching his dry hunch. Unwinking till he swallowed the last crumb. Perhaps T was just because he dared not let. His mind run upon Dick, who'd been his chum. He dared not now, though he could not forget. Dick took his luck. And, life or death, T was luck. From first to last. And you just got to trust. Your luck and grin. It wasn't so much pluck. As knowing that you'd got to, when needs must. And better to die grinning. Quiet now. Had fallen on the night. On either hand. The guns were quiet. Cool upon his brow. The quiet darkness brooded, as he scanned. The starry sky. He'd never seen before. So many stars. Although, of course, he'd known. That there were stars, somehow before the war. He'd never realized them, so thick sown. Millions and millions. Serving in the shop. Stars didn't count for much. 
and then at nights. Strolling the pavements, dull and fit to drop. You didn't see much but the city lights. He'd never in his life seen so much sky. As he'd seen this last fortnight. It was queer. The things were taught you. He'd a mind to try. To count the stars, they shone so bright and clear. One, two, three, four. Ah, God, but he was tired. Five, six, seven, eight. Yes, it was number eight. And what was the next thing that she required? Too bad of customers to come so late. At closing time. Again within the shop. He handled knots of tape and reels of thread. Politely talking weather, fit to drop. When once again the whole sky overhead. Flared blind with searchlights, and the shriek of shell. And scream of shrapnel roused him. Drowsily. He stared about him, wondering. Then he fell. Into deep dreamless slumber. He could see. Two dark eyes peeping at him, ere he knew. He was awake, and it again was day. An August morning, burning to clear blue. The frightened rabbit scuttled. Far away. A sound of firing. Up there, in the sky. Big dragonflies hung hovering. Snowballs burst. About them. Flies and snowballs. With a cry. He crouched to watch the airman pass, the first. That he'd seen under fire. Lord, that was pluck. Shells bursting all about them, and what nerve. They took their chance, and trusted to their luck. At such a dizzy height to dip and swerve. Dodging the shell fire. Hell. But one was hit. And tumbling like a pigeon, plump. Thank heaven. It righted, and then turned. And after it. The whole flock followed safe, four, five, six, seven. Yes, they were all there safe. He hoped they'd win. Back to their lines in safety. They deserved. Even if they were Germans. T was no sin. To wish them luck. Think how that beggar swerved. Just in the nick of time. He, too, must try. To win back to the lines, though, likely as not. He'd take the wrong turn, but he couldn't lie. Forever in that hungry hole and rot. He'd got to take his luck. To take his chance. Of being sniped by foes or friends. He'd be. With any luck in Germany or France. Or kingdom come, next morning. Drearily. The blazing day burnt over him, shot and shell. Whistling and whining ceaselessly. But light. Faded at last, and as the darkness fell. He rose, and crawled away into the night. Wilfred Wilson Gibson. The White Comrade. After W. H. Lethem's The Comrade in White. Under our curtain of fire. Over the clotted clods. We charged, to be withered, to reel. And despairingly wheel. When the bugles bade us retire. From the terrible odds. As we ebbed with the battle tide. Fingers of red hot steel. Suddenly closed on my side. I fell, and began to pray. I crawled on my hands and lay. Where a shallow crater yawned wide. Then, I swooned. When I woke, it was yet day. Fierce was the pain of my wound. But I saw it was death to stir. For fifty paces away. Their trenches were. In torture I prayed for the dark. And the stealthy step of my friend. Who, staunch to the very end. Would creep to the danger zone. And offer his life as a mark. To save my own. Night fell. I heard his tread. Not stealthy, but firm and serene. As if my comrade's head. Were lifted far from that scene. Of passion and pain and dread. As if my comrade's heart. In carnage took no part. As if my comrade's feet. 
were set on some radiant street. Such as no darkness might haunt. As if my comrade's eyes. No deluge of flame could surprise. No death and destruction daunt. No red-beaked bird dismay. Nor sight of decay. Then in the bursting shell's dim light. I saw he was clad in white. For a moment I thought that I saw the smock. Of a shepherd in search of his flock. Alert were the enemy, too. And their bullets flew. Straight at a mark no bullet could fail. For the seeker was tall and his robe was bright. But he did not flee nor quail. Instead, with unhurrying stride. He came. And gathering my tall frame. Like a child, in his arms. Again I swooned. And awoke. From a blissful dream. In a cave by a stream. My silent comrade had bound my side. No pain now was mine, but a wish that I spoke. A mastering wish to serve this man. Who had ventured through hell my doom to revoke. As only the truest of comrades can. I begged him to tell me how best I might aid him. And urgently prayed him. Never to leave me, whatever betide. When I saw he was hurt. Shot through the hands that were clasped in prayer. Then, as the dark drops gathered there. And fell in the dirt. The wounds of my friend. Seemed to me such as no man might bear. Those bullet holes in the patient hands. Seemed to transcend. All horrors that ever these war-drenched lands. Had known or would know till the mad world's end. Then suddenly I was aware. That his feet had been wounded, too. And, dimming the white of his side. A dull stain grew. You are hurt, white comrade. I cried. His words I already foreknew. These are old wounds, said he. But of late they have troubled me. Robert Haven Schaffler. Fleuret. The wounded Canadian speaks. My leg. It's off at the knee. Do I miss it? Well, some. You see. I've had it since I was born. And lately a devilish corn. I rather chuckle with glee. To think how I've fooled that corn. But I'll hobble around all right. It isn't that, it's my face. Oh, I know I'm a hideous sight. Hardly a thing in place. Sort of gargoyle, you'd say. Nurse won't give me a glass. But I see the folks as they pass. Shudder and turn away. Turn away in distress. Mirror enough, I guess. I'm gay. You bet I am gay. But I wasn't a while ago. If you'd seen me even today. The darndest picture of woe. With this Caliban mug of mine. So ravaged and raw and red. Turn to the wall in fine. Wishing that I was dead. What has happened since then? Since I lay with my face to the wall. The most despairing of men. Listen. I'll tell you all. That poilu across the way. With the shrapnel wound on his head. Has a sister, she came today. To sit a while by his bed. All morning I heard him fret. Oh, when will she come? Florette. Then sudden, a joyous cry. The tripping of little feet. The softest, tenderest sigh. A voice so fresh and sweet. Clear as a silver bell. Fresh as the morning dews. Say toy, say toy, Marcel. Mon frere, come je sui hurus. So over the blanket's rim. I raised my terrible face. And I saw, how I envied him. A girl of such delicate grace. Sixteen, all laughter and love. As gay as a linnet, and yet. As tenderly sweet as a dove. Half woman, half child, floret. Then I turned to the wall again. I was awfully blue, you see. And I thought with a bitter pain. Such visions are not for me. So there like a log I lay. All hidden, I thought, from view. 
when sudden I heard her say. Ah! Who is that Maluriax? Then briefly I heard him tell. However he came to know. How I'd smothered a bomb that fell. Into the trench, and so. None of my men were hit. Though it busted me up a bit. Well, I didn't quiver an eye. And he chattered and there she sat. And I fancied I heard her sigh. But I wouldn't just swear to that. And maybe she wasn't so bright. Though she talked in a merry strain. And I closed my eyes ever so tight. Yet I saw her ever so plain. Her dear little tilted nose. Her delicate, dimpled chin. Her mouth like a budding rose. And the glistening pearls within. Her eyes like the violet. Such a rare little queen, Florette. And at last when she rose to go. The light was a little dim. And I ventured to peep, and so. I saw her, graceful and slim. And she kissed him and kissed him, and oh. How I envied and envied him. So when she was gone I said. In rather a dreary voice. To him of the opposite bed. Ah, friend, how you must rejoice. But me, I'm a thing of dread. For me never more the bliss. The thrill of a woman's kiss. Then I stopped, for lo. She was there. And a great light shone in her eyes. And me. I could only stare. I was taken so by surprise. When gently she bent her head. May I kiss you, sergeant, she said. Then she kissed my burning lips. With her mouth like a scented flower. And I thrilled to the fingertips. And I hadn't even the power. To say, God bless you, dear. And I felt such a precious tear. Paul on my withered cheek. And darn it. I couldn't speak. And so she went sadly away. And I know that my eyes were wet. Ah, not to my dying day. Will I forget, forget. Can you wonder now I am gay? God bless her, that little floret. Robert W., service. Not to keep. They sent him back to her. The letter came. Saying, and she could have him. And before. She could be sure there was no hidden ill. Under the formal writing, he was in her sight. Living dot, they gave him back to her alive. How else? They are not known to send the dead. And not disfigured visibly. His face. His hands. She had to look, to ask. What was it, dear? And she had given all. And still she had all, they had, they the lucky. Wasn't she glad now? Everything seemed one. And all the rest for them permissible ease. She had to ask, what was it, dear? Enough. Yet not enough. A bullet through and through. High in the breast. Nothing but what good care. And medicine and rest, and you a week. Can cure me of to go again. The same. Grim giving to do over for them both. She dared no more than ask him with her eyes. How was it with him for a second trial? And with his eyes he asked her not to ask. They had given him back to her, but not to keep. Robert Frost 19. The Fallen The Dead I Blow out, you bugles, over the rich dead. There's none of these so lonely and poor of old. But, dying, has made us rarer gifts than gold. These laid the world away, poured out the red. Sweet wine of youth. Gave up the years to be. Of work and joy, and that unhoped serene. That men call age, and those who would have been. Their sons, they gave, their immortality. Blow, bugles, blow. They brought us, for our dearth. Holiness, Lacked so long, and love, and pain. Honor has come back, as a king, to earth. And paid his subjects with a royal wage. And nobleness walks in our ways again. And we have come into our heritage. 2. 
these hearts were woven of human joys and cares. Washed marvelously with sorrow, swift to mirth. The years had given them kindness. Dawn was theirs. And sunset, and the colors of the earth. These had seen movement and heard music, known. Slumber and waking, loved, gone proudly friend. Felt the quick stir of wonder, sat alone. Touched flowers and furs and cheeks. All this is ended. There are waters blown by changing winds to laughter. And lit by the rich skies, all day. And after. Frost, with a gesture, stays the waves that dance. And wandering loveliness. He leaves a white. Unbroken glory, a gathered radiance. A width, a shining peace, under the night. Rupert Brooke. The island of Skyros. Here, where we stood together, we three men. Before the war had swept us to the east. Three thousand miles away, I stand again. And bear the bells, and breathe, and go to feast. We trod the same path, to the selfsame place. Yet here I stand, having beheld their graves. Skyros whose shadows the great seas erase. And settle bar that evermore blood craves. So, since we communed here, our bones have been. Nearer, perhaps, than they again will be. Earth and the worldwide battle lie between. Death lies between, and friend destroying sea. Yet here, a year ago, we talked and stood. As I stand now, with pulses beating blood. I saw her like a shadow on the sky. In the last light, a blur upon the sea. Then the gale's darkness put the shadow by. But from one grave that island talked to me. And, in the midnight, in the breaking storm. I saw its blackness and a blinking light. And thought, so death obscures your gentle form. So memory strives to make the darkness bright. And, in that heap of rocks, your body lies. Part of the island till the planet ends. My gentle comrade, beautiful and wise. Part of this crag this bitter surge offends. While I, who pass, a little obscure thing. War with this force, and breathe. And am its king. John Macefield. For the fallen. With proud thanksgiving, a mother for her children. England mourns for her dead across the sea. Flesh of her flesh they were, spirit of her spirit. Fallen in the cause of the free. Solemn the drums thrill. Death august and royal. Sing sorrow up into immortal spheres. There is music in the midst of desolation. And a glory that shines upon our tears. They went with songs to the battle, they were young. Straight of limb, true of eye, steady and aglow. They were staunch to the end against odds uncounted. They fell with their faces to the foe. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning. We will remember them. They mingle not with their laughing comrades again. They sit no more at familiar tables of home. They have no lot in our labor of the daytime. They sleep beyond England's foam. But where our desires are and our hopes profound. Felt as a wellspring that is hidden from sight. To the innermost heart of their own land they are known. As the stars are known to the night. As the stars that shall be bright when we are dust. Moving in marches upon the heavenly plain. As the stars that are starry in the time of our darkness. To the end, to the end, they remain. Lawrence Binion. Two Sonnets. I. Saints have adored the lofty soul of you. Poets have whitened at your high renown. We stand among the many millions who do hourly wait to pass your pathway down. You, so familiar, once were strange, we tried to live as of your presence unaware. But now in every road on every side, we see your straight and steadfast signpost there. I think it like that signpost in my land. Hoary and tall, which pointed me to go. Upward, into the hills, on the right hand. 
where the mists swim and the winds shriek and blow. A homeless land and friendless. But a land. I did not know and that I wished to know. 2. Such, such is death, no triumph, no defeat. Only an empty pail, a slate rubbed clean. A merciful putting away of what has been. And this we know, death is not life a feat. Life crushed, the broken pale. We who have seen. So marvelous things know well the end not yet. Victor and vanquished are a one in death. Coward and brave, friend, foe. Ghosts do not say. Come, what was your record when you drew breath? But a big blot has hit each yesterday. So poor, so manifestly incomplete. And your bright promise, withered long and sped. Is touched, stirs, rises, opens and grows sweet. And blossoms and is you, when you are dead. Charles Hamilton Sorley. June 12, 1915. How sleep the brave. Nay, nay, sweet England, do not grieve. Not one of these poor men who died but did within his soul believe. That death for thee was glorified. Ever they watched it hovering near. That mystery yawned thought to plumb. Perchance sometimes in loathed fear. They heard cold danger whisper, Come. Heard and obeyed. Oh, if thou weep. Such courage and honor, beauty, care. Be it for joy that those who sleep. Only thy joy could share. Walter de la Mer. The debt. No more old England will they see. Those men who've died for you and me. So lone and cold they lie, but we. We still have life, we still may greet. Our pleasant friends in home and street. We still have life, are able still. To climb the turf of Bignor Hill. To see the placid sheep go by. To hear the sheepdog's eager cry. To feel the sun, to taste the rain. To smell the autumn scents again. Beneath the brown and gold and red. Which old October's brush has spread. To hear the robin in the lane. To look upon the English sky. So young they were, so strong and well. Until the bitter summons fell. Too young to die. Yet there on foreign soil they lie. So pitiful, with glassy eye. And limbs all tumbled anyhow. Quite finished, now. On every heart, lest we forget. Secure at home, engrave this debt. Too delicate is flesh to be. The shield that nations interpose. Twixt red ambition and his foes. The bastion of liberty. So beautiful their bodies were. Built with so exquisite a care. So young and fit and lithe and fair. The very flower of us were they. The very flower, but yesterday. Yet now so pitiful they lie. Where love of country bade them high. To fight this fierce caprice, and die. All mangled now, where shells have burst. And lead and steel have done their worst. The tender tissues ploughed away. The year's slow processes effaced. The mother of us all, disgraced. And some leave wives behind, young wives. Already some have launched new lives. A little daughter, little son. For thus this blundering world goes on. But never more will any see. The old secure felicity. The kindnesses that made us glad. Before the world went mad. They'll never hear another bird. Another gay or loving word. Those men who lie so cold and lone. Far in a country not their own. Those men who died for you and me. That England still might sheltered be. And all our lives go on the same. Although to live is almost shame. E. V. Lucas. Requiescant. In lonely watches night by night. Great visions burst upon my sight. For down the stretches of the sky. The hosts of dead go marching by. Strange ghostly banners o'er them float. Strange bugles sound an awful note. 
and all their faces and their eyes are lit with starlight from the skies. The anguish and the pain have passed, and peace hath come to them at last. But in the stern looks linger still the iron purpose and the will. Dear Christ, who reigns above the flood of human tears and human blood, a weary road these men have trod. Oh, house them in the home of God. Frederick George Scott in a field near Ypres, April, 1915. To our fallen. Ye sleepers, who will sing you? We can but give our tears. Ye dead men, who shall bring you? Fame in the coming years. Brave souls, but who remembers? The flame that fired your embers. Deep, deep the sleep that holds you. Who one time had no peers. Yet maybe fames but seeming. And praise you'd set aside. Content to go on dreaming. Yeah, happy to have died. If of all things you prayed for. All things your valor paid for. One prayer is not forgotten. One purchase not denied. But God grants your dear England. A strength that shall not cease. Till she have won for all the earth. From ruthless men release and made supreme upon her. Mercy and truth and honor. Is this the thing you died for? Oh, brothers, sleep in peace. Robert Ernest Verneed. The old soldier. Lest the young soldiers be strange in heaven. God bids the old soldier they all adored. Come to him and wait for them, clean, new shriven. A happy doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. Lest it abash them, the strange new splendor. Lest it affright them, the new robes clean. Here's an old face, now, long tried, and tender. A word and a hand clasp as they troop in. My boys, he greets them, and heaven is homely. He their great captain in days gone o'er. Dear is the friend's face, honest and comely. Waiting to welcome them by the strange door. Catherine Tynan. Lord Kitchener. Unflinching hero, watchful to foresee. And face thy country's peril wheresoever. Directing war and peace with equal care. Till by long duty ennobled thou wert he. Whom England called and bade, set my arm free. To obey my will and save my honor fair. What day the foe presumed on her despair. And she herself had trust in none but thee. Among Herculean deeds the miracle. That massed the labor of ten years in one. Shall be thy monument. Thy work was done. Ere we could thank thee, and the high sea swell. Surgeth unheeding where thy proud ship fell. By the lone Orkneys, at the set of sun. Robert Bridges June 8, 1916 Kitchener there is wild water from the north. The headlands darken in their foam. As with a threat of challenge stubborn earth. Booms at that far wild sea line charging home. The night shall stand upon the shifting sea. As yesternight stood there. And hear the cry of waters through the air. The iron voice of headlands start and rise. The noise of winds for mastery. That screams to hear the thunder in those cries. But now henceforth there shall be heard. From broth of Bursi, Marwick Head. And shadows of the distant coast. Another voice bestirred. Telling of something greatly lost. Somewhere below the tidal glooms, and dead. Beyond the uttermost. Of what the night may hear on any seas. From tempest known wild waters cry, and roar of iron shadows looming from the shore. It shall be heard, and when the orcades sleep in a hushed Atlantic starry folds, as smoothly as far down below the tides, sleep on the windless broad sea wolds, where this night's shipwreck hides, by many a sea home where the shock of ocean's battle falls, and into spray gives up its ghosts of strife, by reef and rock. Ravaged by their eternal brood affray. With monstrous frenzies of their shore's green foe. 
where overstream and overfall and undertow. Strive, snatch away. A wistful voice, without a sound. Shall dwell beside Pomona, on the sea. And speak the homeward and the outward bound. And touch the helm of passing minds. And bid them steer as wistfully. Saying, He did great work. Until the winds. And waters hereabout that night betrayed. Him to the drifting death. His work went on. He would not be gainsaid. Though where his bones are, no man knows, not one. John Helston. The fallen subaltern. The star shells float above, the bayonets glisten. We bear our fallen friend without a sound. Below the waiting legions lie and listen. To us, who march upon their burial ground. Wound in the flag of England, here we lay him. The guns will flash and thunder o'er the grave. What other winding sheet should now array him? What other music should salute the brave? As goes the sun god in his chariot glorious. When all his golden banners are unfurled. So goes the soldier, fallen but victorious. And leaves behind a twilight in the world. And those who come this way, in days hereafter. Will know that here a boy for England fell. Who looked at danger with the eyes of laughter. And on the charge his days were ended well. One last salute, the bayonets clash and glisten. With arms reversed we go without a sound. One more has joined the men who lie and listen. To us, who march upon their burial ground. Herbert Asquith 1915 The debt unpayable. What have I given? Bold sailor on the sea. In earth or heaven. That you should die for me. What can I give? O oh, soldier, leal and brave. Long as I live. To pay the life you gave. What tithe or part? Can I return to thee? O oh, stricken heart. That thou shouldst break for me. The wind of death. For you has slain life's flowers. It withereth. God grant, all weeds in ours. F. W. Bourdelin. The messages. I cannot quite remember. There were five. Dropped dead beside me in the trench, and three. Whispered their dying messages to me. Back from the trenches, more dead than alive. Stone deaf and dazed, and with a broken knee. He hobbled slowly, muttering vacantly. I cannot quite remember. There were five. Dropped dead beside me in the trench, and three. Whispered their dying messages to me. Their friends are waiting, wondering how they thrive. Waiting a word in silence patiently. But what they said, or who their friends may be. I cannot quite remember. There were five. Dropped dead beside me in the trench, and three. Whispered their dying messages to me. Wilfred Wilson Gibson. A cross in Flanders. In the face of death, they say, he joked, he had no fear. His comrades, when they laid him in a Flanders grave. Wrote on a rough-hewn cross, but Calvary stood near. Without a fear he gave. His life, cheering his men, with laughter on his lips. So wrote they, mourning him. Yet was there only one. Who fully understood his laughter, his gay quips. One only, she alone. She who, not so long since, when love was new, confused. Herself toyed with light laughter while her eyes were dim. And jested. While with reverence despite her jest. She worshipped God and Him. She knew, O oh love, O oh death, His soul had been at grips. With the most solemn things. For she, was she not dear? Yes, he was brave, most brave, with laughter on his lips. The braver for his fear. G. Rostrover Hamilton. Resurrection. Not long did we lie on the torn, red field of pain. We fell, we lay, we slumbered, we took rest. With the wild nerves quiet at last, and the vexed brain. Cleared of the winged nightmares, and the breast. 
freed of the heavy dreams of hearts afar. We rose at last under the morning star. We rose, and greeted our brothers, and welcomed our foes. We rose, like the wheat when the wind is over, we rose. With shouts we rose, with gasps and incredulous cries. With bursts of singing, and silence, and awestruck eyes. With broken laughter, half tears, we rose from the sod. With welling tears and with glad lips, whispering, God. Like babes, refreshed from sleep, like children, we rose. Brimming with deep content, from our dreamless repose. And, what do you call it, asked one. I thought I was dead. You are, cried another. We're all of us dead and flat. I'm alive as a cricket. There's something wrong with your head. They stretched their limbs and argued it out where they sat. And over the wide field friend and foe. Spoke of small things, remembering not old woe. Of war and hunger, hatred and fierce words. They sat and listened to the brooks and birds. And watched the starlight perish in pale flame. Wondering what God would look like when he came. Hermann Hagedorn. To a hero. We may not know how fared your soul before. Occasion came to try it by this test. Perchance, it used on lofty wings to soar. Again, it may have dwelt in lowly nest. We do not know if bygone nightly strain. Impelled you then, or blood of humble clod. Defied the dread adventure to attain. The cross of honor or the peace of God. We see but this, that when the moment came. You raised on high, then drained, the solemn cup. The grail of death, that, touched by valor's flame. The kindled spirit burned the body up. Oscar C. A. Child. Rupert Brooke. In memoriam. I never knew you save as all men know. Twitter of mating birds, flutter of wings. In April coverts, and the streams that flow. One of the happy voices of our springs. A voice forever stilled, a memory. Since you went eastward with the fighting ships. A hero of the great new odyssey. And God has laid his finger on your lips. Moray Dalton. The players. We challenged death. He threw with weighted dice. We laughed and paid the forfeit, glad to pay. Being recompensed beyond our sacrifice. With that nor death nor time can take away. Francis Bickley. A song. Oh, red is the English rose. And the lilies of France are pale. And the poppies grow in the golden wheat. For the men whose eyes are heavy with sleep. Where the ground is red as the English rose. And the lips as the lilies of France are pale. And the ebbing pulses beat fainter and fainter and fail. Oh, red is the English rose. And the lilies of France are pale. And the poppies lie in the level corn. For the men who sleep and never return. But wherever they lie in English rose. So red, and a lily of France so pale. Will grow for a love that never and never can fail. Charles Alexander Richmond. 20. Women in War. Harvest Moon. Over the twilight field. Over the glimmering field. And bleeding furrows, with their sodden yield. Of sheaves that still did writhe. After the scythe. The teeming field, and darkly overstrewn. With all the garnered fullness of that noon. Two looked upon each other. One was a woman, men had called their mother. And won the harvest moon. And won the harvest moon. Who stood, who gazed. On those unquiet gleanings, where they bled. Till the lone woman said. But we were crazed. We should laugh now together, I and you. We too. You, for your ever dreaming it was worth. A star's while to look on, and light the earth. And I, for ever telling to my mind. Glory it was and gladness, to give birth. To humankind. I gave the breath, and thought it not amiss. I gave the breath to men. 
for men to slay again. Lording it over anguish, all to give. My life, that men might live. For this. You will be laughing now, remembering. We called you once dead world, and barren thing. Yes, so we called you then. You, far more wise. Then to give life to men. Over the field that there. Gave back the skies. A scattered upward stare. From sightless eyes. The furrowed field that lay. Striving a while, through many a bleeding dune. Of throbbing clay, but dumb and quiet soon. She looked. And went her way. The harvest moon. Josephine Preston Peabody. Harvest Moon, 1916. Moon, slow rising, over the trembling sea rim. Moon of the lifted tides and their folded burden. Look, look down. And gather the blinded oceans. Moon of compassion. Come, white silence, over the one sea pathway. Pour with hallowing hands on the surge and outcry. Silver flame, and over the famished blackness. Petals of moonlight. Once again, the formless void of a world wreck. Gropes its way through the echoing dark of chaos. Tide on tide, to the calling, lost horizons. One in the darkness. You that veil the light of the all beholding. Shed white tidings down to the dooms of longing. Down to the timeless dark, and the sunken treasures. One in the darkness. Touch, and hearken, under that shrouding silver. Rise and fall, the heart of the sea and its legions. All in one, one with the breath of the deathless. Rising and falling. Touch and waken so, to a far hereafter. Ebb and flow, the deep, and the dead in their longing. Till at last, on the hungering face of the waters. There shall be light. Light of light, give us to see, for their sake. Light of light, grant them eternal peace. And let light perpetual shine upon them. Light, everlasting. Josephine Preston Peabody. My son. Here is his little cambric frock. That I laid by in lavender so sweet. And here his tiny shoe and sock. I made with loving care for his dear feet. I fold the frock across my breast. And in imagination, ah, my sweet. Once more I hush my babe to rest. And once again I warm those little feet. Where do those strong young feet now stand? In flooded trench, half numb to cold or pain. Or marching through the desert sand. To some dread place that they may never gain. God guide him and his men today. Though death may lurk in any tree or hill. His brave young spirit is their stay. Trusting in that they'll follow where he will. They love him for his tender heart. When poverty or sorrow asks his aid. But he must see each do his part. Of cowardice alone he is afraid. I ask no honors on the field. That other men have one as brave as he. I only pray that God may shield. My son, and bring him safely back to me. Ada Tyrell. To the others. This was the gleam then that lured from far. Your son and my son to the holy war. Your son and my son for the accolade. With the banner of Christ over them, in steel arrayed. All quiet roads of life ran on to this. When they were little for their mother's kiss. Little feet hastening, so soft, unworn. To the vows and the vigil and the road of thorn. Your son and my son, the downy things. Sheltered in mother's breast, by mother's wings. Should they be broken in the Lord's wars, peace. He who has given them, are they not his? Dream of knight's armor and the battle shout. Fighting and falling at the last redoubt. Dream of long dying on the field of slain. This was the dream that lured, nor lured in vain. These were the voices they heard from far. Bugles and trumpets of the holy war. Your son and my son have heard the call. Your son and my son have stormed the wall. Your son and my son, clean as new swords. 
your man and my man and now the Lord's. Your son and my son for the great crusade. With the banner of Christ over them, our knights new made. Catherine Tynan. The journey. I went upon a journey. To countries far away. From province unto province. To pass my holiday. And when I came to Serbia. In a quiet little town. At an inn with a flower filled garden. With a soldier I sat down. Now he lies dead at Belgrade. You heard the cannon roar. It boomed from Rome to Stockholm. It peeled to the far west shore. And when I came to Russia, a man with flowing hair called me his friend and showed me a flowing river there. Now he lies dead at Lemberg, beside another stream, in his dark eyes extinguished the friendship of his dream. And then I crossed two countries, whose names on my lips are sealed. Not yet had they flung their challenge, nor led upon the field. Sons who lie dead at Liege. Dead by the Russian lance. Dead in southern mountains. Dead through the farms of France. I stopped in the land of Louvain. So tranquil, happy, then. I lived with a good old woman. With her sons and her grandchildren. Now they lie dead at Louvain. Those simple kindly folk. Some heard, some fled. It must be. Some slept, for they never woke. I came to France. I was thirsty. I sat me down to dine. The host and his young wife served me. With bread and fruit and wine. Now he lies dead at Cambrai. He was sent among the first. In dreams she sees him dying. Of wounds, of heat, of thirst. At last I passed to Dover. And saw upon the shore. A tall young English captain. And soldiers, many more. Now they lie dead at Dixmude. The brave, the strong, the young. I turn unto my homeland. All my journey sung. Grace Fallow Norton. A mother's dedication. Dear son of mine, the baby days are over. I can no longer shield you from the earth. Yet in my heart always I must remember. How through the dark I fought to give you birth. Dear son of mine, by all the lives behind you. By all our fathers fought for in the past. In this great war to which your birth has brought you. Acquit you well, hold you our honor fast. God guard you, son of mine, where'er you wander. God lead the banners under which you fight. You are my all, I give you to the nation. God shall uphold you that you fight aright. Margaret Peterson To a Mother Robbed mother of the stricken motherland. Two hearts in one and one among the dead. Before your grave with an uncovered head. I, that am man, disquiet and silent stand. In reverence. It is your blood they shed. It is your sacred self that they demand. For one you bore in joy and hope, and planned. Would make yourself eternal, now has fled. But though you yielded him unto the knife. An altar with a royal sacrifice. Of your most precious self and dearer life. Your master gem and pearl above all price. Content you. For the dawn this night restores. Shall be the dayspring of his soul and yours. Eden Philpots. Spring in wartime. I feel the spring far off, far off. The faint, far scent of bud and leaf. Oh. How can spring take heart to come? To a world in grief. Deep grief. The sun turns north, the days grow long. Later the evening star grows bright. How can the daylight linger on? For men to fight. Still fight. The grass is waking in the ground. Soon it will rise and blow in waves. How can it have the heart to sway? Over the graves. New graves. Under the boughs where lovers walked. The apple blooms will shed their breath. But what of all the lovers now? 
Parted by Death. Grey Death. Sarah Teasdale. Occasional Notes. Asquith, Herbert. He received a commission in the Royal Marine Artillery at the end of 1914 and served as a second lieutenant with an anti-aircraft battery in April, 1915, returning wounded during the following June. He became a full lieutenant in July, but was invalid home after about six weeks. In June, 1916, he joined the Royal Field Artillery and went out to France once again with a battery of field guns at the beginning of March, 1917. Since that time he has been steadily on active service. Bucher, Paul. He was educated at St. Paul's School, and is a sub-lieutenant in the Royal Naval Air Service. Binion, Lawrence. His war writings include The Winnowing Fan and The Anvil, published in America under the title of The Cause. Bridges, Robert. He has been Poet Laureate of England since 1913. Brooke, Rupert. He was born at Rugby on August 3, 1887, and became a Fellow of King's College, Cambridge, in 1913. He was made a sub-lieutenant in the Royal Naval Volunteer Reserve in September, 1914, accompanied the Antwerp expedition in October of the same year, and sailed with the British Mediterranean Expeditionary Force on February 28, 1915. He died in the Aegean, on April 23, and lies buried in the island of Skyros. See the memorial poems in this volume, The Island of Skyros, by John Macefield. And Rupert Brooke, by Moray Dalton. His war poetry appears in the volume entitled 1914 and Other Poems, and in his collected poems. Campbell, Wilfred. This well-known Canadian poet has lately published sagas of vaster Britain, war lyrics, and Canada's responsibility to the Empire. His son, Captain Basil Campbell, joined the Second Pioneers. Chesterton, Cecil Edward. He has been editor of The New Witness since 1912, and is a private in the Highland Light Infantry. His war writings include The Prussian Hath Said in His Heart, and The Perils of Peace. Chesterton, Gilbert Keith. This brilliant and versatile author has written many essays on phases of the war, including weekly contributions to the Illustrated London News. Cohn, Helen Gray. She has been professor of English in Hunter College since 1899. Her war poetry appears in the volume entitled A Chant of Love for England, and other poems. Coulson, Leslie. He joined the British Army in September, 1914, declined a commission and served in Egypt, Malta, Gallipoli, where he was wounded, and Prance. He became sergeant in the City of London Regiment, Royal Fusiliers, and was mortally wounded while leading a charge against the Germans in October, 1916. Dixon, William McNeil. He is professor of English language and literature in the University of Glasgow. His war writings include the British Navy at war and the fleets behind the fleet. Doyle, Sir Arthur Conan. He has written much of interest on the war, especially as regards the Western campaigns. Field, A.N. He is a private in the 2nd New Zealand Brigade. Franca, Gilbert. Upon the declaration of war he joined the 9th East Surrey Regiment, Infantry, with the rank of Lieutenant. He was transferred to the Royal Field Artillery in March, 1915, and was appointed adjutant during the following July. He proceeded to France in that capacity, fought in the Battle of Luce, served at Ypres during the winter of 1915-16, and thereafter took part in the Battle of the Somme. In October, 1916, he was recalled to England, was promoted to the rank of Staff Captain in the Intelligence Corps, and was sent to Italy to engage in special duties. Freeman, John. He was Lieutenant Colonel in the Russian A.M.S. On the Bacteriological Mission to Galicia, 1914. Galsworthy, John. Mr. Galsworthy, the well-known novelist, poet, and dramatist, served for several months as an expert masseur in an English hospital for French soldiers at Martorette. Gibson, Wilfred Wilson. His war writings include Battle, etc. Grenfell, the Han, Julian, DSO. He was a captain in the 1st Royal Dragoons, 
was wounded near Ypres on March 13, 1915, and died at Boulogne on May 26. He was the eldest son of Lord Desborough. Julian set an example of light-hearted courage, wrote Lt. Col. Mocklican, of the 8th Service Battalion Rifle Brigade, which is famous all through the army in France, and has stood out even above the most lion-hearted. Hall, James Norman. He is a member of the American Aviation Corps in France, and author of Kitchener's Mob and High Adventure. He was captured by the Germans, May 7, 1918, after an air battle inside the enemy's lines. Hardy, Thomas. He received the Order of Merit in 1910. Humphrey, Malcolm. He is a Lance Corporal in the Army Ordnance Corps, Nairobi, British East Africa. Hewlett, Maurice Henry. He has published a group of his war poems under the title Sing Songs of the War. Hodgson, W.N. He was the son of the Bishop of Ipswich and Edmondsbury, and was a lieutenant in the Devon Regiment. His pen name is Edward Melbourne. He won the Military Cross. He was killed during the Battle of the Somme, in July, 1916. Howard, Geoffrey. He is a lieutenant in the Royal Fusiliers. Hussey, Dinley. He is a lieutenant in the 13th Battalion of the Lancashire Fusiliers, and has published his war poems in a volume entitled Fleur de Lys. Hutchinson, Henry William. He was the son of Sir Sidney Hutchinson, and was educated at St. Paul's School. He was a second lieutenant in the Middlesex Regiment. He was killed while on active service in France, March 13, 1917, at the age of 19. Kaufman, Herbert. He has published The Song of the Guns, which was later republished as The Hellgate of Soissons. Kipling, Rudyard. Mr. Kipling won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1907. His war writings include The New Armies in Training, France at War, and Sea Warfare. Knight Adkin, James. When war was declared he was a master at the Imperial Service College, Windsor, and lieutenant in the Officers' Training Corps. He volunteered on the first day of the war and was attached to the 4th Battalion, Gloucester Regiment. He went into the trenches in March, 1915, was wounded in June, and was invalid home. In 1916 he returned to France, and is now a captain in charge of a prisoner of war camp. Lee, Joseph. He enlisted, at the outbreak of the war, as a private in the 1ST-4TH Battalion of the Black Watch, Royal Highlanders, in which corps he has served on all parts of the British front in France and Flanders. Sergeant Lee has both composed and illustrated a volume of war poems entitled Ballads of Battle. Lucas, Edward Verrill. Mr. Lucas has undertaken hospital service. Macefield, John. Mr. Macefield, whose lectures in America early in 1916 quickened interest in his work and personality, has been very active during the war. He has written an excellent study of the campaign on the Gallipoli Peninsula, having served there and also in France in connection with Red Cross work. Morgan, Charles Langbridge. He is a sub-lieutenant in the Royal Naval Division, and is a prisoner of war in Holland. Newbolt, Sir Henry. He is the author of the Book of the Thin Red Line, Story of the Oxfordshire and Buckinghamshire Light Infantry, and Stories of the Great War. Noise, Alfred. His war writings include A Salute to the Fleet, etc. Ogilvy, William Henry. He was Professor of Agricultural Journalism in the Iowa State College, USA, from 1905 to 1907. His war writings include Australia and other verses. Oswald, Sydney. He is a major in the King's Royal Rifle Corps. Phillips, Stephen. His war writings include Armageddon, etc. He died December 9, 1915. Philpotts, Eden. Among his war writings are The Human Boy and the War, and Plain Song, 1914-16. Ratcliffe, A. Victor. He was a lieutenant in the 10th-13th West Yorkshire Regiment, and was killed in action on July 1, 1916. Ronsley, Rev. Hardwick Drummond. 
He has been canon of Carlisle and honorary chaplain to the king since 1912. Robertson, Alexander. He is a corporal in the 12th York and Lancaster Regiment. He was reported missing in July 1916. Ross, Sir Ronald. He is the president of the Poetry Society of Great Britain and is a lieutenant colonel in the Royal Army Medical Corps. Scollard, Clinton. His war writings include The Vale of Shadows and other verses of the Great War and Italy in Arms and other verses. Scott, Canon Frederick George. He is a major in the 3rd Brigade of the 1st Canadian Division, British Expeditionary Force. Seaman, Sir Owen. He has been the editor of Punch since 1906. His war writings include Wartime and Made in England. Seeger, Allen. Among the Americans who have served at the front there is none who has produced poetic work of such high quality as that of Alan Seeger. He was born in New York on June 22, 1888, was educated at the Horace Mann School. Hackley School, Terrytown, New York, and Harvard College. In 1912 he went to Paris and lived the life of a student and writer in the Latin Quarter. During the third week of the war he enlisted in the Foreign Legion of France. His service as a soldier was steady, loyal and uncomplaining, indeed, exultant would not be too strong a word to describe the spirit which seems constantly to have animated his military career. He took part in the Battle of Champagne. Afterwards, his regiment was allowed to recuperate until May, 1916. On July 1 a general advance was ordered, and on the evening of July 4 the Legion was ordered to attack the village of Belloyensenter. Seeger's squad was caught by the fire of six machine guns and he himself was wounded in several places, but he continued to cheer his comrades as they rushed on in what proved a successful charge. He died on the morning of July 5. The twenty or more poems he wrote during active service are included in the collected poems by Alan Seeger, with an introduction by William Archer. Sorley, Charles Hamilton he was born at Old Aberdeen on May 19, 1895. He was a student at Marlborough College from the autumn of 1908 until the end of 1913, at which time he was elected to a scholarship at University College, Oxford. After leaving school in England, he spent several months as a student and observer in Germany. When the war broke out he returned home and was gazetted 2nd Lieutenant in the 7th, Service, Battalion of the Suffolk Regiment. In November he was made a lieutenant, and in August, 1915, a captain. He served in France from May 30 to October 13, 1915, when he was killed in action near Hullock. His war poems and letters appear in a volume entitled Marlborough and Other Poems, published by the Cambridge University Press. Stuart, J.E. He is a captain in the 8th Border Regiment, British Expeditionary Force. He was awarded the Military Cross in 1916. Tenant, Edward Wyndham. He was the son of Baron Glen Connor, and was at Winchester when war was declared. He was only 17 when he joined the Grenadier Guards, 21st Battalion. He had one year's training in England, saw one year's active service in France, and fell, gallantly fighting, in the Battle of the Somme, 1916. Tynan, Catherine. Pen name of Mrs. Catherine Tynan Hinkson, whose war writings include The Flower of Peace, The Holy War, etc. Van Dyke, Henry. He has been professor of English literature in Princeton University since 1900, and was United States Minister to the Netherlands and Luxembourg from June, 1913, to December, 1916. He has published several war poems. He is the first American to receive an honorary degree at Oxford since the United States entered the war. The degree of Doctor of Civil Law was conferred upon him on May 8, 1917. Verneed, Robert Ernest. He was educated at St. Paul's School and at St. John's College, Oxford. On leaving college he became a professional writer, producing several novels and two books of travel sketches, one dealing with India, the other with Canada. He was also author of a number of poems. At the outbreak of the war he enlisted in the 19th Royal Fusiliers, known as the Public Schools Battalion, 
and received a commission as second lieutenant in the Rifle Brigade, in May, 1915. He went to France in November, 1915, and was wounded during the Battle of the Somme in September of the following year, but returned to the front in December. He died of wounds on April 9, 1917, in his 42nd year. Waterhouse, Gilbert. Lieutenant in the 2nd Essex Regiment. His war writings include Railhead, and other poems. He is reported missing. Wharton, Edith. She has written Fighting France, etc.